Hello, everybody. I'm Mike. This is Tom Hess. He's your leader in the clubhouse here. He has decided he's going to join me for a while here on the live stream like he usually does. Hello, Tom. Hello, Mike. How are you? I'm pretty good. We are uh, streaming on Facebook right now, but archiving our footage on YouTube here at the uh, 2018 September event of the Fusion Realtors Community First National Bank Open. Uh, Tom's going to join me for some commentary here. We're going to take you out to the lanes. We have our featured pair lanes 13 and 14 right here in <coughs> front of us and it looks like we're going to get started with brent boho billy hibbard alex denton and michael martell down here so a pretty talented group to get started tom yeah four very talented uh, college kids um, three of them from st ambrose and i believe michael is from robert morris Appreciate everybody joining us here today for the B-Squad. games, Game one of seven, seven games uh, for this event. And, Tom, that's a change, isn't it? Uh, it's it's flipped back and forth. Um, sometimes it's been seven. One year they did six. But most of the time it's been seven. Okay. I think I remember seeing an email that says, back by popular demand, <laughs> seven games. <laughs> and I thought, okay, joy, three more games I have to stream. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think they changed it to six for a couple of years. I don't remember. I've won so many tournaments; it's hard to tell you. We do have an interactive chat. If you have any questions for us, we'd be more than happy to answer them for you. Are we on your page or the Greater Iowa page? We are on an Inside Bowling Facebook page. And we'll be archived on YouTube. Want to welcome in all of our viewers so far. Make sure you uh, give us a like and uh, share the feed. Make sure you share the feed. Let people know where we're at. This is a change. Um, we were having some YouTube connectivity issues today uh, here at the 2018 Fusion Realtors. Community First National Bank Open. I want to thank those two companies for their title sponsorship here. They've been uh, sponsoring the event for, for quite a while now. This thing's been going on. Oh, geez, there's been, what, almost 15 of these things now? Yeah, I think that I think this is the 16th. Number 16. Uh, so we were chatting with Joe this morning. Uh, but there had been 15, and five of the previous 15 winners were on A-Squad. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Quite a few on this squad as well. The only two-time winner, uh, Casey Murphy from down in Springfield, Missouri, is on this squad. He's yeah, the he's only bowling. one that's won this twice. Also want to thank the Waterloo Convention and Visitors Bureau for what they do for this great event. Budweiser and Bud Light also a sponsor. Logo and Fusion with coupon code GIBA2018, GIBA2018. You can save 20% over at logoandfusion.com. Kingpin Bar and Grill, the Hampton Inn, and then season-long sponsors of Joe's Greater Iowa Bowling Association, which you've been a part of for a long time, Tom. Long, long time. I uh, grew up bowling these. Uh, led me to what I've done on the PBA. And the sponsor there is Ebonite, which happens to be on your chest. Yes, sir. Proudly. As well as uh, Gershman Mortgage, Brandon Steen. Uh, Works at Kirschman Mortgage now and another season-long sponsor of the Greater Iowa Bowling Association. And uh, the bowlers are all thankful for all of those sponsors. This event is a unique one with the way that it pays out. It's not very, very top-heavy. It, it pays out like a consistent prize fund. Like, Isn't it like three grand to win or something like that? Well, they, they raised the entry fee for this one $10 this time, and it was supposed to pay 3000 with a full field of 180 bowlers. And they're going right. to come in around 150 160 probably? I, I, yeah, that's what Joe said. He was, I think after this squad, he's projected at 140 something but we'll probably get a lot of re-entries on C-Squad. There's a few, quite a few I can see one, two, three people just right here um, bowling again that bowled on A. Don't know what uh, happened and why this isn't full. For several years, you had to, you had to prepay, you know, 
yeah. a month in advance for some of it to uh, even hold your spot. I think um, a lot of it has to do with uh, a lot of other tournaments going on uh, and just a lot of other commitments in general. Uh, you know, there's just a lot more things to bowl, I think, right now, and I think people have to have to pick their spots. Uh, people are asking here in the chat, where can you find the standings? You can find our standings right here on the Facebook page. If you scroll down, we just posted them a little while ago from A Squad. Uh, we also have them available on Twitter. You can go follow us over uh, on Twitter at uh, Inside Bowling on Twitter. So you can find those uh, in both of those places. We do have uh, Kim Richter's monitoring uh, this page today, and she's taking care of that for us. Hi, Kim. Tom Hess joining me here in the booth. Uh, I was looking for those standings here. Uh, I'm going to open that up right now. Tom Hess is your leader, and he's nice enough to join me as he does just about every year here. Tom, you were 224 over. Let's talk about the oil pattern. It's it's pretty much a 2 to 1 ratio, 43 feet in length. And uh, let's talk a little bit about how you conquered this oil pattern and led by 50 pins. Well, I, uh, not a, I'm not a big look at the graph guy. I uh, looked at it was 33 feet, a little bit uh, higher volume. Um, but this is a higher friction house. So I brought some stronger balls, and that was that was my plan, was to start out with uh, some stronger balls. Uh, I thought either it was going to be a choice or a rip solid to start, um, and I did end up starting with a rip solid. Um, but I was crossing with uh, Joe and his son Greg and Quentin Bolin, and Greg had a really, really good look with the GB3. So uh, on my fill ball of game one, I had a... GB3 drilled identical to my rip solid. I threw it on the fill ball. Looked really good. Um, has 2,000 surface on it. And threw it for the, you know, threw them from games two through five. Probably stayed with it, you know, one game a little bit too long. Shot 190 there, game five, and then switched right to an identical drilled GB3 Pearl. Um, you know, I started at 15, and by the end of the day, I was looking at 21. So I didn't move, you know, a whole lot. I just think from what from what I saw from the guys who are around me, obviously when you're bowling, you don't get to see a whole lot of uh, what's going on. Uh, but it looked to me like in was where you needed to be. Um, some of the guys were playing the gutter, missing the head pin a lot when they missed right. Now, I'm not saying I had a ton of room. You know, I just got in there and got comfortable. And when, once you start letting them go and you get a couple breaks, it's easy to, uh, to take advantage of those. I thought after game one, it looked like the scores were just going to be huge unless it was just right where I was bowling. But uh, I, I shot, I think I had 236 game one it was, and uh, I was probably in, in the pairs around me, was probably in fifth, I think. You know, Ken Duffield started with a front 10. The other two guys on, you know, Quentin Bolin and Greg Inglick started with 250s on our pair. So I was 230 and was third on my pair. I didn't even look. What's the cut right now, Mike? Do you have any idea? Well, currently right now, depending on how many they take, um, there's 57 bowlers on the squad, so you would say what? Let's say 19. 19. 19. Currently right now, 19 33. is minus 33. Wow, minus I would have I would have never guessed that looking at the scores from game one. Also uh, on the squad, finishing uh, second on the A squad, Kenny Calkins the third at plus 174. Third is Nick Pate at plus 164. Don Breeden at 119 is fourth. Fifth is Dwayne Kiltz at one, uh, 111, it looks like. And Ken Duffield rounds out your top six. So you can see those scores online. Um, also, um, I've been playing around a little bit here. Um, over there. That's the oil pattern. You can look at it real quick. Oh, hey! But I got rid of I got rid of Tom. I got the oil <laughs> pattern there instead. So much better to look at. So go ahead and take a look at this oil pattern right I've here. I've got for a face a for radio. Yeah, that's what Tom was describing and talking about. So we will uh, get that off of there and take you back out to the lane. So there's your oil pattern. You're watching Brent Boho. Brent bowls at St. Ambrose. I uh, believe he's a Team USA, or was he Junior Team Junior, year? I believe, junior yeah, team Junior USA. Team USA. Yeah, he's down there bowling with Billy Hibbard, uh, who's also on the same uh, lane as Brent. They're on lane 13 together. 
and then uh, they're matched up with Alex Denton and Michael Martell. Yeah, I know that Billy and Alex um, go to St. Ambrose because that's where my daughter goes now. Um, I'm not sure what year they are. I think Alex is a senior. Billy, I think, might be a sophomore, and Brett, Brent, excuse me, is, I don't know if he's a sophomore or a junior. And Michael Martell, I believe they told me was uh, Robert Morris. All, uh, all very talented young bowlers. It's great to see. Michael uh, absolutely crushed him up in Dubuque at the first Greater Iowa, up at the uh, 11th frame. Before I think he finished, ended up finishing third, I think. Catching up on the chat here, want to say hello to Aziz, Larry Bird. Um, loved your commercials, the Frito-Lay ones with Michael Jordan back in the uh, 90s. Thank you. Uh, Robert Calabrese, I uh, want to say hello to Justin McAllister. Tom, what balls did you use today? I think you went over that, right? Yep, I used a Rip Solid, a GB3, and a GB3 Pearl. Tom, your wife is checking in and saying, go bees. <laughs> uh, Brock says, hi, Mr. Hess, from Scott Alderson. Oh, hi, Brock. How are you, young man? Russell Deer checking in. Uh, Bob Randall's back joining us again, Ralph Hibbard. So we got a lot of, a lot of folks in here uh, interacting in the chat. If you have a question, make sure. <laughs> Ralph helping me out. Brent is a senior and Billy is a junior and Alex is a senior. Thank you, Ralph. I'd like to uh, take a minute to, to let people know who, who is on this squad. Chris Ennis says, hello to Mike and King Fess. <laughs> <laughs> he was born in this building. Yeah, he was. He was. It was about four years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. Um, so here, I'm going to take you through the bowlers that we have. We have uh, <coughs> down on lanes three and four, we got Perro Duderick, Joe Nolan, Tony Miller, and Andrew Tomley. Down on lanes five and six, we got Dave Axon, Tony Manna, Dave Barris, and Brian Roth. On lane seven and eight, we got Jacob Borish, Tanya Rumpaper, she's a re-entry as well, Andy Buelo, and Jonathan Shallow. Down on lanes nine and ten, we have Chris Gibbons, Brent Ritchie, Kevin Duncan, and Chad Nelson. Down on lanes eleven and twelve, we have Travis Anderson, Tommy Barnwell, Mark Stinger, and Steve Taylor. Right here on thirteen and fourteen, and we've been watching, we got Brent Boho, Billy Hubbard, Alex Denton, and Michael Martell. Fifteen and sixteen, we got Tom Adcock, Andy Stone, Steve Keeler, Casey Murphy. Lane 17 and 18, we got Jacob. Is that Gossi or Goss? Do you know Jacob? I have no idea. I'm going to go with uh, Jacob uh, Goss and Jared Goss, his brother, I'm guessing, and Andy, Andrew Willems uh, all bowling on 17 and 18. Down on 19 and 20, we got Nick Heilman, Jeff Schway, Dan Limish, Rob Warren. 21 and 22, we got Brandon Biondo, Mike McWethy, A.J. Chapman, and Tammy Walsh. Lanes 23 and 24, Jordan Eli, Stian Hoff, Chris Hill, Pete Roosh. Uh, 15 and 16, we have Jamie Clark, Bill Luthner, Kai Ho Kyun, Chris Stangler. Down on 27 and 28, we got good old Rob Amers, James Husabo, Zach Vassi, and Dave Kuchera. Uh, also, Will Matafi, Christopher Yato, uh, taking care of 29 and 30. Down on 31 and 32, we got Brent Kimmig, Ryan Zager, CJ Boyer. And that rounds out your field today. 56 bowlers on this squad. So four short there. <clears throat> you said there was 57 on A is three short. So the most we can get. Well, normally what Joe does on C squad is if enough people want to bowl, he opens up one and two for the C squad. Tom, how good is the Savage? You know, <laughs> how good they're, I, I'm just being honest and it's not because I'm on their staff, but I haven't thrown a bad ball from Evan Knight in, in quite a while. They're all pretty good. They're all unique. Um, for me, the Savage has been really, really good um, on, on house shots. It, it really helps control the over under stuff. It's a ball for me that uh, 
when I when I don't quite get it there on a house shot, it's still strong enough to hook. And when I do get it right and it hits the friction, it rolls off of it instead of jerking off of it. I just uh, moved us over to lanes uh, 7 and 8 and 9 and 10. Keep the questions coming in. Matt Sanders, PBA Rookie of the Year. He's not going to be able to say that for very long because this year is almost over. He won't be the reigning Rookie of the Year anymore. But Matt checks in and says hello. Hey, Matt, how are you, sir? Mike Calhoun as well. Chuck Hi, Mikey. Ritchie. Chuck. Dakota Conaway, Russell Deer, Trish Bach. That offer is still there, Chuck. You fly me out, I'll come bowl Rocky Mount next year. Got a lot of really good bowlers joining here. It tells me everybody that joins the, the chat here on Facebook since we're streaming over here this weekend. Austin Bolt, Eric Fritton, just to name a few of the great bowlers. Why aren't bowlers they bowling? They should be here bowling. Yeah, I don't know. I was talking earlier, what a great job they've done with this bowling center over the years. I've been coming here six or seven years now. They've just they've, they've given it a retro upgrade, but it just looks really nice in here. Yeah, I, I love the the masking units, what they did with the orange and black. Yeah, that, me too. That really pops out. Um, great owners here, really care about the sport. I mentioned we were watching lane seven and eight and nine and ten now here as I've got two pairs at once. Uh, just to go over those bowlers again, Jacob Borish and Tanya Rumpenberg, they're, they're bowling together. Uh, so their scoring monitors are exactly the same up there. That's who you see on the left side of the left side of the scoreboard. Tanya on seven. On, on like eight, you got Andy Buelo and Jonathan Shallow. What were you going to say, Tom? Looks like she's throwing a Paradox Black. And then over on nine and ten, we got Chris Gibbons and Brent Ritchie and Kevin Duncan and Chad Nelson. Chad Nelson's just one of those guys, when you say his name, uh, he's made a lot of finals in this event, a lot of finals in just amateur tournaments in general all throughout the Midwest and, and out a little bit west as well also. Yeah, he uh, he likes Vegas. At least he used to uh, 15, 20 years ago when I was doing all that stuff. I was talking to Chad a little bit before bowling. Uh, <clears throat> he hasn't thrown a ball in a couple months. Just wanted to come down and bowl and support the event. I told him, yeah, you haven't thrown a ball in a couple months. That's probably a great thing. You'll probably go out there and whack him. But he's struggling a little bit here at the start. We've got some good interaction happening between some of the folks here in the chat. Uh, Jay France, Francis, he, he checks in and says uh, he's the best bowler in the world. He would have bowled, but he had to work. <laughs> well, thanks, Jay. <laughs> thanks, Jay. That's an extra spot for me. I appreciate that. He's also got the creepiest profile photo also. <laughs> just, just he wins that award. Um, and then Tony um, Mahan, is it M man, uh, Mahan, Tony? I would say Mahan, maybe. Mahan, yeah. He says, hey, what's up, Mike and Tom? Go Cardinals. No, is, uh, no, you, you need your glasses. <laughs> your Cardinals are falling just a little bit faster than my Cubs. Well, they, they weren't supposed to ever climb. <laughs> it's... Uh, it's going to be an interesting finish to the uh, NL Central. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting division. That is for sure. We've got all the sports firing. We've got you know we've got uh, basketballs about to start up. Hockey's about to start up. Uh, Major League Baseball postseason's always amazing to watch. The NFL, college, and then of course the Fusion Realtors. I mean yeah. everything's going on at the same yeah. time right now. Yeah. We're at the most important one. We are. Oh, wow. Oh, Steve. <laughs> Steve Taylor just 410. That might be the worst breaking ball. It's off that camera. You can see it way over to the right side of your screen to the right of Kevin Duncan. That was Steve Taylor's 410. Just a light splash. Looked like it was going to rip the rack, and the pins just decided not to hit the 4 and the 10. It's good to see Kevin Duncan out bowling as well. He, he took a little bit of time off. Now he's back bowling. Yeah, Kevin's from down in uh, Mexico, Missouri. A little bit of drive to get up here. You know what? I didn't realize this, Tom, but I was looking at a map for the first time in my life, a thing called an atlas, and I was like, you know, it might have made more sense for me to, like, fly to Minneapolis and drive down here than from St. Louis. Can you help me with that? Is, what, 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 what would be the best place to fly and come down? If you're flying to come to Waterloo, probably Des Moines. Is that like a big airport or something, though? Is it's it not a major airport? It's not Minneapolis. It's not St. Louis. It's not Chicago. What's closer to here, Minneapolis or St. Louis? Oh, Minneapolis. Way closer. That's what I was thinking. Way closer. And I never even would have thought. I didn't realize Waterloo was this far north. I've been coming here for six years. And I didn't even realize it. Joe Inglekiss just joined and Jerry Anderson, back-to-back -back great tournament organizers. Yes, sir. 
One of them I like, the other one, you know, I don't know about that Jerry Anderson guy. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Jerry. All kinds of great bowlers in here. We got Sean Quinn. We've got uh, Justin Veach. Tom Partle Jr., who's just recently rededicated himself to bowling, is having some success. All of those bowlers that are in there should go get one of their non-bowling friends and have them join the chat and start growing the sport. Yeah, that's right. Tanya did not bowl well earlier today, and looks like she's got them pretty much figured out. She's off to a pretty good start. I had no idea she was going to be here. Uh, she is coaching at Mount Mercy now. Oh, really? Yeah, in Cedar Rapids. Okay, that makes a lot more sense now. Yeah, she's one of the assistants for uh, Andy Dirks. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a bold prediction here. Okay. Tanya will be in the top five in this tournament. Um, she's very capable. She's very capable I, a lot I, with Tanya. I just know how this tournament ends up being, and rev rate doesn't necessarily mean as much at these events than it does. This is a shot maker's event it almost is. every time. I mean... Just go through and look at the people that have won. It's a shot makers event. Yeah. You, McNeil. Murphy hooks it, but he kind of slow hooks it, but he's a shot maker. Steve Keeler, not a big boomer. Dave Barris. Dave Barris, Nick Pate. Chris Pearson. Yeah, just shot makers. And uh, I think Tanya, I, Tanya's a great shot maker and, and – I think the re I think she was pissed earlier with how she bowled, <laughs> and now she's ready. You know, guy I'm surprised who hasn't won this event is Tony Mana. Yeah, he he's is. He's always there. Seems like every time he bowls, he's bowling in that top ten. But I don't think he's got a win yet. Trish says, uh, Mike, we need another women's tourney for the everyday women's bowler. I think there is one coming to St. Louis. I heard about the Queens or something. So oh, nice. good, good on uh, Ashley uh, Ashley Cole putting together a St. Louis Queens tournament. Larry Very Husky nice. in the chat as well says, great call, Mike. I don't know what my great call was. Maybe the call is Tanya finishing in the top five. Or maybe it was getting me in the booth. That's a good call, too, especially since I'm going to go eat and you're going to handle the whole thing. Oh, really? Yeah, you're here till you're here till 10.30 p.m., buddy. I got work to do. Uh, no, I won't be here till 10.30. I'll probably stay here. Well, you know what? I mean, how many years have I been here for last call? You've been here for <laughs> last. Like, how about when I bowled <laughs> with a house ball Yeah. and, and absolutely annihilated your, your buddy? <laughs> <laughs> That's Mr. not Bowers. just my buddy. He's my ball driller, man. Yeah, well, he's your buddy. <laughs> he is my buddy, but he's more than a buddy. He's my ball driller. That was hilarious. That was so much fun. And he's lucky that I lost the footage. You guys, uh, what? Yeah, you I lost the footage? Uh, I never even got to watch it back. Oh, man, that's awful. There yeah. was some great commentary on I, that I match. I know, I know. I did take it to him, though. <laughs> that was I bowled that 190. Was awesome. That was awesome. With a house ball on a leftover burn, and I think the high game on that pair <laughs> was like 186 the last three games. Yeah. Yep. One of these days I'm going to bowl this event. You know, that's the key right there to to this event. Tanya right there, she went a little bit high. Yeah. She left 610. Yep. I mean, that that's key. Keeps them strikes adding up instead of catching up. Let's, uh, let's go check back in on uh, 13 and 14 and see how these guys are doing. Well, it looks like Michael Martell just had a little bit of a rough ninth frame. He had 5-1 there in the ninth. Uh, spare this and strike for 204. Um, Billy just threw the first one in the 10th. Gives him 180 in the ninth. He can strike out for 210. I think Alex was following Billy, and Alex has uh, 126 in the sixth, strikes in 789, and Brent has 118 in the sixth, uh, strikes 789. So some uh, some big games possible there from the college kids. If you're just joining us, we stream this event every year, twice a year. Uh, we've only missed a couple. Um, 
but I'm Mike Flanagan. I'm joined by Tom Hess here in the booth. He's leading the tournament after A squad earlier today that had 57 bowlers shoe up. He led the squad by over 50 pins. Tom joins me every year in the booth. We're streaming on Facebook this weekend because uh, our YouTube connectivity doesn't talk to us for whatever reason, which has never happened before. So we'll be on Facebook all weekend, but all the footage will be archived on our YouTube channel this upcoming week. Hey, I just got a text from my wife. We need to look through the chat and find Russell's question. Russell. Yeah, she said ask, answer Russell's question from the chat. He's asked twice. Oh, yeah, the uh, the HT1, the ball that nobody knows anything about. Well, Russell, I've got it drilled. Uh, I drilled it Thursday night before league. Um, wasn't able to throw it. Can't throw it during league um, and have not thrown it yet. I think it looks good in pictures. I think it looks good on my Facebook posts. And uh, I think it's going to look good when I finally get to throw it and just keep just keep paying attention to uh, to both my regular page and my fan page, Tom Hess Bowling, and there will be some videos here in the next few days on that. So I, I can tell you guys a little bit of information here about this HT1 from Hammer because I work closely with Ebony International. They're constantly developing products, and in the Hammer brand in particular, they've been sending out some test balls to pro shop operators, uh, just different samples of people they want to get feedback from. And this particular H HT1 prototype ball uh, was sent out to the, to the staffers, to the pro staffers and some other select individuals. And you guys got it in a box and we're told, just drill it. Like there's, there was no information about it. Just drill it, give us feedback, which is a true test ball. And uh, so far, the people that have been posting about it and showing it, obviously there's some interest because it's been asked in the chat twice by the same person. Um, people are liking what they're seeing from it. So I'll be looking forward to keeping in with your social media, Tom. If you don't follow Tom on social media, you should go follow him on Twitter and over on Facebook and on Instagram, and you'll have some updates on that, along with a lot of other EBI staffers if you're interested in what that ball has to, has to do. Mike Machuga bowled 300 with it uh, on a Facebook Live uh, earlier last week. So it'll be interesting to see if that ball gets released or a version of that ball gets released here in the upcoming months. The only thing that I think they did wrong is it, put, it should be the TH1. Not the HT one. Come okay, on. Yeah, the Tom If you're going to send me a yeah. ball, I mean, you know, at least put my initials right. Well, if it was a file foldering <laughs> system, it would have a comma, <laughs> and it would be H, you know, H comma T. No, I'm excited to throw it. Uh, watching Mike's video looks like it's going to be a unique bowling ball. And uh, one thing that I know from talking to a few of the staffers and watching it go down the lane is it doesn't flare a lot. Okay. I know that much. Okay. I've seen that much, at least. The drill that I put on it is a pretty high flaring drill for me, so that'll be interesting. Oh, I definitely want to get the feedback from you on how much it flares. Okay. Over the weekend, you're gonna you're gonna give me some tips on how to shoot these videos so they're better quality for everybody. Went out and purchased me a little tripod. We're gonna try to start <laughs> doing some more stuff um, right now. You know, I, I've the last couple I've done, I, I did with Brian. We've been doing some stuff when I drilled the new balls, and we've been having fun. You know, he's holding my phone, and we're chatting and talking, and you know, just having some good time. I'm gonna try to be a little bit more professional, but I'm still gonna try to be me, and I'm you know run some do some live stuff, do some unedited videos, just, you know, set the camera up. Now that I got the ability to uh, just set my phone up, that's what I'm going to do it with, so I don't know how good a quality they're going to be. But One of the best things you can do with a phone, do you have an iPhone? I do. So this is a tip to everybody at home as well. If you go into your settings, okay, we'll both go there now. We're up here in the booth looking at the settings of our phones <laughs> while we're trying to be broadcasting here. So you, you go down to, uh, I believe it is camera. Yeah, camera. Okay. And you click on that. Okay. And record video. Record video, yep. So click on that. Okay. What is your set at? 180. Yeah, so that's not good, dude. Okay. 1080p at 60 frames per second is better, but 4K is even better. Okay. So that's going to give you the best recording all oh, the time very nice yeah isn't that great so you just yeah. you just go back into your into your camera mode here 
And then uh, it's also got a slow-mo that you can do, and you want to bump that up to the highest as well. Record slow-mo. At the 1080 HD at 120 frames. That's higher? Yep, okay. Yep, yep, yep. That's confusing how on one screen they have the higher one at the top. Yeah, and, no, yeah. You know, to guys like me who aren't very technical savvy and wouldn't know that. Now, it will take a little more data, or it will take up a little more space on your phone. So if you are running out of room on your phone, uh, you just have to be careful with deleting and putting, you know, videos where and how and when. So. Well, I don't think I am, but I don't even know where to look at that. So. Yeah, it's some, it's some, it might be under general or something. General? Not sure. Yeah, general storage somewhere, maybe. I can't believe you don't know this. Yeah, I don't. I, I just. I only. I Google search stuff whenever I. Mike, you're my all-knowing technical guy. I just. I really just Google <laughs> it, dude. <laughs> I love to watch Shark Tank, and one night I was watching, and the guy was yeah. talking about how what he engineered, and he says, "No, I'm not an engineer." He says, "I've got a, I've got a major in Google and a minor in one of them other ones. I forget which one he said." It used to be Ask Jeeves. You remember Ask Jeeves search engine? Uh, that no. I do not. Yeah. No. Bringing it back into the booth, this is Tom. Hi, everybody. I am Mike, and we are bringing you the coverage here from Waterloo, Iowa. Uh, game number two coming up. I think I changed the graphic down on the screen. Oh, it's actually that way. <laughs> it's right here. It's right there. Yeah, yeah, so right that's there. been changed. Whoops. i got to figure this out. This is all new to me. Yeah. How do so I do it's, this? it's on the other side <laughs> of me. So it's over here. And... Uh, also, one other thing that I haven't told anybody about yet is we launched a merch store, Tom. You know that. I do. You're, you're a proud customer. Good product. Uh, yeah, so you can get T-shirts on Inside Bowling, and that's a way to help support what we do and potentially do more. I want to do more of this, but I need to expand my team. I need to pay some payroll. So if you I'm like what we do, I know you are. I, we just talked about that. <laughs> Tom, Tom wants to work here. So if you want Tom to work at Inside Bowling, order a few shirts. You can save 15% this weekend with coupon code Facebook. Um, yeah, that's the deal. Check them out. They're pretty cool. Yep. You know, you were talking about Mike Judy earlier, and uh, – Mike, Mike Judy just hopped in to be part of this webcast. Well, He's hello, Michael. How are you, boss man? Uh, we also have another celebrity in here. Phil Brylo is watching. Phil. $2 Phil. $2 Phil. Phil, this job's easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Sherry Radford, Willie Scott, Johnny Brown joined. That's Tyler's all says, I had this morning. Yeah, Tyler says that's all you had this morning. You led the field by over 50 pins. And uh, Mike Judy says, what's up, Mike and Tom Hess? Nothing, sir. Just trying to help grow the sport of bowling. Well, I can tell you what, what's not going on, Mike, while I'm sitting in this booth. I'm not finishing the uh, spreadsheet that I need to get done for you, but it will be done by Monday, brother. Uh, I'm about done with it. I just want it to be perfect. You are a perfectionist. I've noticed that from the several you times know, I've worked with you. It's interesting that you say that because that, that's something I'm trying to work on because it's um, it's it's hurting the amount, the volume of work I can get done. I, I, I want to say I think there was one time where you couldn't get the graphic to switch and you were getting all mad because it had the wrong game yeah, when that, we were doing yeah, something. That bothers me. <laughs> Looking around, I saw some high scores on that, that game one, but uh, not, nothing quite near as high as what we had game one. Of course, we had a guy right next to me who had the front 10. So a couple of guys on my pair, 250, like I said. We're getting a look at uh, Chris Gibbons, Brent Ritchie, Kevin Duncan, and Chad Nelson, who we had on our uh, double pair over here. Now they're on our feature pair on 13 and 14. Sue uh, said that uh, the shirts that, that you guys ordered, uh, she gets a lot of compliments on them when she wears them out. Yep, she she really likes the the bowlers ones, the friends. Yeah, off. yeah. Michael uh, McBride says, what's up, Tom? Coming to Peoria at the end of September. I don't think I'm going to make that, sir. Uh, my plans for the next two weekends, I have a regional that I'm the defending champion of um, next weekend over in Omaha. And then I will actually be working for Ebonite the next weekend uh, doing a clinic with Bowlers Mart. Excuse me, for Bowlers Mart with Verity Crowley up in uh, Rockford, Illinois. It's going to be a bittersweet day. 
It's going to be my daughter's very first college tournament, and I got to miss because I'm going to work. Wow. Wow. Well, don't, good, good luck to her. Yeah, I don't know yet whether she's going to be JV or varsity. Uh, they've got one day left. She's in ninth. She's doing, doing pretty good for a freshman. She's hanging right in there. Um, doesn't really matter to me whether she's varsity or JV. She's working hard. She's making friends, and uh, it's going to be a fun year. Get, getting to to know these kids, how hard they work at the game. Um, Eric and Craig have put together quite an impressive uh, couple of teams over there at St. Ambrose. Just got a notification on my phone. Cubs Reds getting ready to start. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Cubs and the Reds. Time the, uh, what time do the Cardinals play the Dodgers today, Michael? Any I, don't, idea? I don't know, but I don't, I don't like the Dodgers getting hot right now. Yeah, we're done with them. Yeah. I think the Cubs last night won their 40, I think they said at the end of the game, the 46th come from behind win this year for the Cubs. Joe Nolan, does he, he's from St. Louis, right? He is. Does he, does he, the, does he work for Daniel? No, no, no. He actually gets his stuff drilled out of Ray Orff's. Oh. Why well, was I thinking he was one of Daniel's employees? Because there's a ton of people in the St. Louis area that are uh, good bowlers and EBI staff related, and uh, the default button is Daniel Berto. <laughs> 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 the Orff's are good people, too. Yeah, they're awesome. The youngest one, Andrew, he's been tearing up a storm down there. He's been doing really good. Evidently, the Cardinal game has already started. The Dodgers are up 10 to 4. Sweet. Oh, I mean, sorry, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't ex I don't expect the Cardinals to win this year. I'll tell you what, though. I do have uh, high expectations for the Blues this year. And I'm just set up for a huge letdown. Huge you letdown. You sound like me and the Hawkeyes. Yeah. Whenever they say the Hawkeyes are going to be good, they end up 7 and 4. When they say they're not going to be good, they end up 10 and 2. <laughs> now, do, now do me a favor, and I haven't done my due diligence on this, but what are the, what's the other Iowa team that's that's big? Iowa. What what sport? Okay, do, do me a favor. Tell me tell me who like some of the most famous Iowa basketball players are. Everybody that's went to Kansas. You mean college? Oh, like, like, who, who's played for Iowa, or who was the coach of the Iowa team? Basketball? Yeah. Ha for the Hawkeyes. Yeah. Uh, Roy Marble, B.J. Armstrong. Um, boy, I don't. So I've got a lot going on right now, and I can't remember anything and everything, but uh, I do want to share something with you. Um, okay. I, I have a podcast that I'm getting ready to launch, and I say I'm getting ready to launch because it's been like two months in the making, <laughs> and I already have seven episodes recorded. Nice. Um, I just have to get myself to a spot to where when I release the first one that like I've got it going for so many months, you know, because I want to do 100 of them. 100 And I want to launch one a week. So I just got to do it at the right time. But... I sat, I sat down three weeks ago with Dave Ryan, uh, the voice of the PBA on CBS Sports Network currently, yep. also uh, was the voice of the PBA during the Steve Miller time with the 60 Feet to Success and stuff yep. before Rob Stone. And I did an hour-long podcast with Dave Ryan. Oh, and I, very nice. And I believe it was Iowa basketball and Iowa football that he went to. Evidently, there used to be, like, a tunnel that you you had to go, like, underground through, like, this tunnel to get to the games, potentially, um, he was talking about. Anyway, when I launched this podcast, I think people are really going to enjoy it. Do you know that Dave Ryan, when he was 10 years old, his mom and dad let him leave the house and walk to the Iowa games? 
and he'd go into the stadium and he'd get a you know nosebleed seat or whatever, hmm. and he'd watch the games as a 10-year-old and would go home and record into a voice recorder a post-game wrap-up show of what he just got done watching earlier in the night. Awesome. And I just thought, here's a guy who was 10 years old and wanted to be a broadcaster, already knew his, his calling in life and, and his major in school, essentially, at that age, and he's still doing it today. So then he's from Iowa City then? Well, he – they moved there, and he was there during that period of his life. And then they went to Syracuse after that, and he went to – he went to Syracuse for college and all that, but they moved there to live also. Oh. But yet growing up, he was in Iowa. Oh, yeah, and, I didn't realize and that. And I believe it was Hawkeye basketball is what, what was, and, and football games is where he fell in love with sports, and and he's been doing it ever since. So you have to listen to the podcast to make sure I got it right. I've actually I got it in my computer, so on the break I'll call it up and make sure I got the right. I should know this because I interviewed the guy. You'd think I'd know exactly what it was, but I got a lot going on. Yeah, right don't want now. you to be, be Idaho or Ohio. No, it was Iowa. I just don't know if it was <laughs> Iowa or Iowa State. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know about the whole tunnel thing. He said that where he lived, he had to actually like walk through like a tunnel, and it was, you know, in today's world, you'd be you, you'd have your kids taken away from you if you let somebody <laughs> your kid just go do that. That's how the world has changed. But it was, a, it was a really nice sit down, and, and we are so blessed to have Dave Ryan part of, part of bowling. The guy's a pro's pro. Take you over to 7 and 8, 9 and 10. You got Joe Nolan, Piero Duderick, Tony Miller, and Andrew Tomley. And over on 9 and 10, you got Dave Axon, Tony Manna, Dave Barris on his second try of the day, and Brian Roth. Should be getting some standings here shortly after game number one. Always takes a little bit longer on the first game. <laughs> Brandon Barks asks, can we watch this on YouTube? No, you can't this weekend. We can't get it to work. <laughs> Joe actually thinks, and this this is a legitimate deal, like maybe something in North Carolina is preventing with all the, the storms and stuff, maybe one of the YouTube servers went down or something because we've never had this problem before. Go Reds. Come on, Judy. Where are they going to go? They're already down at the bottom. But they'll probably get hot and end up beating my Cubs. We're running on fumes. I know they haven't exactly played 30 games in a row, but 30 straight days with a game scheduled. Tom Partle asks, what is the pattern that they're bowling on? Well, there's the pattern right there. It's the uh, fusion, heavier fusion open 2018 is what it says. You can see the oil ratios there. It's all just about a two to one ratio, 43 feet in length. And you can take a screenshot right now, and then you can look at it later, because I'm going to disappear it off the screen. Give them just a little bit of time to get that. Come on. I know, Brandon, this one here, he says, uh, you know, he hooks it up for all the other streams to YouTube, and we just, I didn't stream five games this morning trying to troubleshoot it. So we just decided at some point we got to bring bowling action to the masses. So we're uh, we're on Facebook this weekend. It's a it's better than nothing. I'll send uh, Mark Zuckerberg an invoice. <laughs> he could probably afford it. I just hope the Russians don't meddle with the results. True. Unless the Russians like me. You know, I hear it's uh, going to impact the PBA Player of the Year this year. Yeah? The Russians are voting on it. Sweet. Yeah. I bet it's a lot of Australians voting on it. You know, a lot of people drink bottled water. And in my house, I drink bottled vodka. 
But as soon as uh, as soon as that whole deal went down, I got rid of all of it. I'm back to water. That's probably why I'm a little grumpy. Yeah. Somebody with a front seven over there. Any yeah, idea who that might be? Front seven. Yeah, there is a front seven over there, isn't there? My bowling next weekend in Omaha? Uh, if I, maybe. Trying to talk my way out of it. Sorry. I shouldn't have chatted like that. I was talking to a guy in the crowd. Dave was asking me if I'm going to bowl the regional next weekend in Omaha. Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Mike's getting his camera. He's going to go down and... Uh, Put a halt to this uh, person's seven bagger here in just a second. So it's just me talking bowling. Who we got up? We're on the that was Dave Axon with a nice little break there on the left side of your. See if I can get this figured out here. So on the, the left side of your split screen, we've got Perro Duderac. Got Joe Nolan. Joe Nolan, Tony Miller, and Andrew Tomley. And on the right side of the split screen that you're watching, we've got Dave Axon, Tony Mana. Former champion of this event, Dave Barris and Brian Roth. And is uh, is that Ryan Zagar oh, on five? Oh, are you jinxing Zagar? Yeah, here oh. he is. This is Ryan Zagar. He's uh, he's got the front seven right now. He's looking for the eighth. Boy, he's he's taking forever here. He's waving everybody on. He knows the camera's behind. I'm him. about to find him. He's nervous. All right. Could be taking his time though because they've only got three on a pair. That's true. That's true. So Ryan Zager, he's got the front seven, looking for eight. There's the uh, typical. Good uh, job, Flanagan. Yep. No problem. As the as the tournament leader, I say thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, all right. Joe just came through with the results after game one. B squad leader Travis Anderson, 241. Second, Brian Roth, 235. Chris Gibbons, 233. Dan Lamise, 31. Mark Stinger, 225. Tanya, 223. Andrew Tomley, 223. Nick Heilman, 221. Tommy Barnwell, 221. In 10th place, off B squad right, is A right. AJ Chapman. Right. Oh, okay. Jen says forget it. Those are all wrong. Forget I even said that. Jen's already grabbed it, Joe. Joe, Jen grabbed it. Jen grabbed it, Joe. No, that's J Jen grabbed it. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to yell in everybody's ear. Um, so just forget I even gave those scores. All that work to go jinx a guy. We got the egg machine back there dropping eggs. Uh-oh. Cluck, cluck. One of my favorite things about coming here. Is Brian Reagan in the chat? Who? Brian Reagan, because he was asking the other day, you know, about a, something about roosters and tacos, and the cluck just made me think of Brian. 
Brand's a good guy. He runs the MSBS out of Michigan. Yeah, runs a lot of tournaments. Yep. Tacos. That's 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 Brand's thing. That's our that's our joke. Just tacos. No real reason. No real rhyme. So if you're just joining us, it is the Fusion Realtors Community First National Bank Open. I am Mike Flanagan, joined by Tom Hess here in the booth. He's leading. Let's see if uh, this audio issue clears itself up. I don't know if you're still watching, Sue, but is it, are you having an audio issue? Sounds like our buddy Chuck. Well, Chuck, it might be because you're in North Carolina. Hope you're safe, my friend. <laughs> now what's the machine dropping games? Yeah, if our internet connection <laughs> goes down for a second, it can, it can cause a repeat. Somebody doesn't like the fact that we're bowling in shorts. He's rooting for anyone wearing pants. Hey, my wife is still watching. Hi, honey. Hope you had a good time with the DOT this morning. Oh, the iPad? Yeah, I brought that with me. It's in the room. Okay, everything seems to be working on my end. I just was watching through my phone, so everything's caught up. But if you are just joining us, it's the uh, Fusion Realtors Community First National Bank Open. I'm Mike Flanagan, joined by Tom Hess. He's leading the tournament by over 50 pins. Uh, we're, we had game one standings, but there was an error, so we're going to have those in just a moment after the uh, first game of the B squad. We have seven games for you. We're in game number two, about, about wrapping up with game number two, actually. Uh, I think the scoring pace is a little bit higher this go around, but uh, could be wrong because uh, I was busy troubleshooting instead of watching bowling the last set. Uh, but I'm seeing more strikes through the middle part of the house here than I did earlier. Um, I want to thank uh, Waterloo Convention and Visitors Bureau, Budweiser and Bud Light, Logo and Fusion, the Kingpin Bar and Grill, Hampton Inn, and the season-long sponsors of Ebonite and Gershman Mortgage for their continued support of these great events that the Inglekiss family puts on. Also, if you're just joining us, the lane pattern is about a 2 to 1 ratio, 43 feet in length, pretty flat. And we're predicting after the first squad, the cut number, which will be the third of the field, is roughly between negative 30 and negative 40, is what we're predicting for a cut score. Okay, somebody on 24 has the front nine. Oh. Well, hurry up. It just reiterates what I said about higher scoring pace. Hurry up. Get down there. Come on. So Mike's going to leave me here in the booth. Uh, okay. Yeah. Ralph, um, Megan seems to be liking St. Ambrose so far. She's uh, she's doing okay with one day to go in the qualifying on the women's side. Uh, she's in ninth, and as you know, Tuesday's their last day. Chuck, I don't mean to be mean about this, but I guess you probably know what washout is right now, huh? All that rain you guys are getting. Hope everybody's uh, safe out that way. Got a lot of friends in the... Uh, Carolinas. Okay. We're going to try this again. Oh, yeah. That's quite a bit different. There was some names wrong or something on there. Um, so I've got the standings after game one. Mark Stinger is the leader at 241. Tanya Rumaper in second with 235. Kevin Duncan, 233. Brandon Biondo, 231. Britt Boho, 225. John Shallow, 223. Tony Mana, 223. Steve Taylor, 221. Dan Lemise, 221. Running out the top 10, Jordan Eli at 219. Oh, no.
Mike's camera, he's got a mobile camera, and the connection's not going to reach down. Somebody's got the front uh, nine down on lanes 29 and 30. Don't know who that is. As soon as we find that out, we'll let you know. Or maybe it wasn't 29 and 30. It looked like he was only down on like 24, 25, somewhere right in there. So anyway, running out top 10, Jordan Eli at uh, plus 19. On this squad, there are 20 people all positive after game one. So the scores overall seem to be a little bit higher this game. Mike did do a good job of putting it to Ryan, too, because that's the only frame he missed. He struck out for 264 after he washed out. Can't get the camera to work, bud. Too far. 23 and 24 won't reach down there. I think Dan Lemish just had 300. Dan, nice. Yeah, Dan Lemish, 300. I tried, I ran down there, set up the camera, but the wireless signal just wouldn't talk to it. Too far away. Should have taken your phone. Yeah, I could have. Oh, now it just, now it just came on. <laughs> <laughs> timing, Mike, it's to all those, about timing. To those of you that are interested in this, if it pops back on, I'll show you. Show you what it did. Here's what I get when I go there right now. So, connecting. I'm just going to go get it. He should have done it closer to the desk. I yeah. don't know what else to say. It's his fault. Yeah, it's his fault. Should have drawn it. If he'd have drawn a different pair to start, you know, he'd have been a little closer to the desk, and you guys could have seen it. Yes, money. They re oil for every squad. Did you go over scores? I did. Gave the top 10. They Damn. told everybody that there was 20 people positive. Oh, there you go. Great. Uh, Dan Lemish is now 121 over after two. That's pretty solid. Wish you'd have hurried him, got done there sooner. Yeah, he's also wearing a uh, T-shirt bought from uh, InsideBowling.com, the Brad and Kyle collection, the Berries T-shirt. Oh, you're selling their... Uh I didn't realize that. I've yeah. checked that out. Yeah, the berries. I've made a couple of orders and uh, haven't been on the site in a little while. Anything new uh, in the EBI collection? Uh, precision, choice. We got the choice. Yeah, those are that. I think that's the latest group. There'll be some new ones being added soon. Save fifteen percent with coupon code Facebook this weekend, everybody. Inside bowling. All right, let's see. Make it yet.
Amani, the other day I was uh, talking with Joe about that because I was helping a couple of the St. Ambrose girls. And I believe uh, just a couple of days ago he said that there was seven ladies signed up. And uh, they do guarantee that one in three ladies will get a check. While we're watching uh, Tony Mana finish up here, I do have the standings up on the screen for you after game number one. Very nice. I'm going to look at it on my phone and see if it's even readable. Not bad. I should probably move it over to the center because the little live thing cuts it off. So let's do something like this. That should make it a little bit better. We can also see what our delay is. We're getting ready to go into game number three. But there are your standings after game number one. So I didn't even look at the score sheet on our squad until about game five or six. Um, how many people were plus on our squad after one game? I don't know. I was troubleshooting. Tro so what are you working? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> You've always got an excuse. I do. I'm full of them. And we are tweeting out the scores as well. So if you go, uh, if you go on uh, on our Twitter at Inside Bowling, you can see the scores over there as well. He says we, but he means Kim is tweeting the scores. She is. <laughs> Jennifer here is getting the PDF <laughs> and emailing it to Kim and I. <laughs> and then I screenshot it and put it up for you guys at home. We don't have any action yet. Nobody's bowling, so we'll bring it in here. Oh, that's nice. Two good-looking people. Like I said, face for radio, man, face for radio. You can just head right over to the old Twitter tweets right here. You can just check it out. You can see uh, right in that range right there. This doesn't want to focus too good on this, but <laughs> anyway, I can tell you that's the scores right there at Inside Bowling. There's a couple good-looking guys right there. Yeah. So is that, do you, uh, do you fly into St. Louis just to drive up here just because it's St. Louis, or do you go home for a couple of days before you come up here? Or? Yeah, I got a couple things going on with this. So, so one thing is, is uh, the expanded equipment to be able to put these things on is based in St. Louis at Brian's house. Oh, okay. So that makes it easy to pick up and go. Traveling with all this stuff is difficult, but what I brought to this event I could have flown with. Well, I remember what you started with, and what, yeah. what I'm looking at yeah, now is not lot. what we started with. Right. It's uh, more condensed. And then the other thing is um, I had a ball shoot in St. Louis with Shannon O'Keefe and Jordan Richard that we did Thursday night. So I flew into St. Louis on Thursday, grabbed my video guy. He flew in as well from uh, California. We went and shot that till 4 in the morning. Got some sleep, went over to Brian's, hung out over there, talked about some other work-related things, got my California video guy to the airport, then shot up here last night, got up here about 10 o'clock, set all this up, troubleshooted this morning. Now I'm here all day with you and everybody, and then uh, tomorrow I'll bring you the finals, and then I fly home on Monday. Nice. So, you know, it's just one of those things that make it makes a lot of sense. Was so... Uh was it a ball video with the with the ladies, or was it something to do with the fact that uh, Shannon just won Player of the Year on the PWBA it's, it's and a ball, Jordan it's was a, the it's Rookie a, of the Year? It's a ball video, and okay. uh, those those couple of highlights there are tied into the video. 
That's nice. Yeah, it'll be, uh, I don't know if people weren't paying attention, but uh, EBI kind of ran over the women's tour this year. Yeah, I got the tour championship starting this weekend. Eight of the 16 uh, bowlers are all Ebonite International. Nice. So. Yeah, EBI, EBI is. Uh, We're on the move. They're, the, it, the guys in Hopkinsville are doing some good work right now. Seriously improving. Serious improvement. But, you know, I mean, everybody's got to stay on top of it, too, you know. This is probably divulging maybe a little bit too much information, but, uh, you know, when you're at events, you, people talk. You overhear people saying things. And I've heard, you know, the motive guys are happy. Sales are up. Storm guys are happy. Sales are up. Yep. Brunswick guys are happy. Sales are up. EBI guys are happy. Sales are up. You hear about a, de a decline in USBC membership, but ball sales are up. Yeah, I, I don't know that there's a decline in bowlers. I think there might be a decline in sanctioned bowlers. In membership, yeah. Yeah. You, you win right now. What? <laughs> Ryan Zager uh, giving Mike a little little hard time. I should go down and tell him I asked him to do that. Yeah, we have this thing about hair. We talk about who has better hair. Oh, who has better hair? Yeah. Oh, I thought he was talking about him going down there and making him 6'3". He probably didn't even notice. Oh, he noticed. The other shots were probably 11 back. The one that he knew the camera was on, he got six. That's true, he did. You, you, there's just an aura around you, Mike. When you come down, we know. I know. At least I do. Dave Kuchera, Will Matafi, Christopher Yado, Brett Kimmick right here on 9 and 10. Looks like we got uh, Rob Amers, James Husabo, Zach Vassi. Over on 27 and 28. Robbie Amers sighting. Rob uh, was talking to me in the Kingpin Lounge there in between uh, sets, and he had a pretty good night at the casino last night. So oh, he's did he already, really? Yeah, he <laughs> said he's already won the tournament. <laughs> Why does that not surprise me? Yeah. It's kind of weird not having like Riggles here. Like very early on that, you know, he was he was like the spokesperson for this tournament. Oh, actually right now we got to be careful when we're talking uh who's on the pair cuz Brent Cummings is actually 11 12 cuz he's going to all have 3. Oh, you're right. Yeah, they do only have three. I was looking at four. Yep, so we've got Christopher Yadu, Dave Kuchera, and Will Matafee on nine and ten. Uh, Jamie Husbow, Rob Amers, and I don't know the other gentleman with them. Known Dave for several years. Dave's uh, in our nationals group. We go to nationals together. He's on our companion team. Did we miss anything in the chat? Yeah, I'm trying to get caught up here. I'm rooting for anywhere, anyone. I'm rooting for anyone wearing pants. Uh, let's see. They were talking about me jinxing Zager. <laughs> Rob just came up and put, I bet I'm the only guy that doesn't in the building that doesn't have a double yet. <laughs> How many ladies entered? Quite a few. I think it was seven. Unless there, more. There were four on the same pair. The last squad. Watching from Norway. Good commentary. Well done. Thanks. Appreciate that, Gout. 
Very nice. Where is Amers? We should have him up on the screen now. Yep, should be on lane eight. This could be his double. Can he get it? Can he get it? Can he get it? Oh, 10 back. 10 back. Look at him. Here is the note that he delivered to the booth. Right there, that's the note he wrote to us up here in the booth. Now he has his double. So I'm gonna crinkle that up. Yep. Throw it away. See, he's trying to go back to the King Thess magic. Yeah, he is. King Thess was born when, when, when this other guy wasn't bowling very good. Then King Thess was born and hopped yeah. in the booth in the middle yeah. of the squad. Yeah. King Thess went out and bowled like 130 or 40 over the last three to go from yeah. way out to being okay. Was that the, did King was King Thess the year I won? I don't think it was. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think I won that year. The year you won, I don't think we came and live streamed. That's it. Yeah. Okay, so can you start packing? Yeah, you're nervous on camera. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, you make me nervous. So you're just going to do qualifying then and go home tonight? That be that sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> I almost left earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of. I know, seriously thought about it. <laughs> I walked by here once, and you were just kind of sitting back in your chair and just had that look like, what the, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's not like you had far to travel, you know? You're right. just like 18 yeah. states away is right. all. Yeah, yeah. So. I just don't have the time to plug all this stuff in and try it all at home and lug it all out and try to, you know, I, I just come here and then deal with it. That's okay. People don't really. I know people are watching qualifying right now and everything, but uh, as long honestly, all I really care about is that on Sunday, once the cashers round starts, everything's working fine. <laughs> yep. Really, that's all I care. I mean, because the step ladder is what it's all about. <laughs> well, Greg, luckily today I was already 200 over when I shot the 190. Yeah, or not Gre quite 200. Gre Greg, 160. Greg crossed with him today, and in the chat says, "Where was King Thess when you were shooting 190?" And then gave a little smirk emoji. Greg's going to make the cut this year. I think Greg was 20 over today. Yeah, I know. We got a uh, we got a phone call from the devil. And he says, it's freezing cold down here. <laughs> Hell's freezing <laughs> over. <laughs> Greg made the cut. I did not say that, Greg. That was not me. Looks like I just got an email here with uh, game number two standings. Oh, I'm tired. I got to quit yawning. Somebody go get me a monster. Hey, sweetheart, I know you just were at Sam's Club and bought some. Will you bring me one? All right. Take a look at these standings here. <laughs> Craig said truth. <laughs> hey, Greg, if you have any questions, you know, about what what goes on tomorrow you need any help since uh, you know I'll be be glad to help you out and explain to you what uh, what goes on tomorrow so we'll take a quick look at the standings here I know it's not like the easiest way to display it but it's it's a way to display it so Rob Warren is your leader Wow at more than 120 that doesn't seem right that's not right no it's not right they put Dan Limish in for 200. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this off the screen. I'm going to go tell Jennifer right now that the standings are wrong. Well, she's got the right sheet here. Something, oh, she does. Something was way wrong there because Rob Warren's not even on here. Yeah, something is wrong with Ru whatever. They must have given Rob Warren 300 would be my guess. Jen, what's going on? What are you doing? First time? First time. 
Okay. Yeah. So let me let me open my new email. Jen Jen's first time. You know, she's only been doing it since she's been like nine or ten. Let me. Uh, <laughs> but she's only eighteen, so. <laughs> okay. I love Jen. She works hard. The whole Inglekus family. Joe, Rosie, and Jen pretty much handle all the check-in, getting the scores. This is one of the best tournament series that I run with scores being up to date. Check-in always runs smooth. Great family, giving a lot of time and uh, effort to the bowling. And hey, Greg, Greg even helped out today. I was really happy to go, happy to go see Greg when we got done bowling because he was paying off the brackets. That was, a, that was a nice conversation Greg and I had back there. Thanks, Greg. All right, now we'll get serious here. We'll go with scores. And here just, they are. Okay, Mike's got them up on the screen, but I'll go ahead and tell you about them just in case you can't read them because that's kind of small. But uh, Dan Lamise with the 300, taking the lead at 121. Kevin Duncan in second, 63. Ryan Zegger with the 260, moving him to, to 40 over. Steve Taylor at 437. Brent Boho at 33 over. Tanya uh, shot 194 to move down to 429. Christopher Yado right here in front of us, bowling right now on lane nine, uh, is in seventh at 25 over. Kiho, Kiho Kuhn at uh, 25 as well. Mark Stinger, 23 over. And running out the top 10 is Tony Miller at uh, plus 22. There are now eight, 19 people, even or above. Okay. There you have it. And if you want to see this, you can go over to Twitter at Inside Bowling. You can look at all the scores, both pages. You know, I wonder if Tom Clark's listening. If he's listening to us, I think Randy and Rob should be worried. Yes, absolutely they should. Very worried. We would be good on Fox Sports, wouldn't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'd be great. Be like, uh, you know, be something like this. And, uh, and Tom, this is this person's first <laughs> telecast. They can win their first title. What's it like to win one title? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you used to bowl a lot, right? Yeah, I used to bowl a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, I'm just, I'm being serious here. So, when you were a kid, did you ever dream about bowling on tour? Yeah, yeah. I wanted yeah, well, to. I did. Yeah. And I won. Yeah, you did. You know. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah, I know. a long time ago. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just kidding. Just having some fun with my buddy. That's a day I'll, uh, I'll probably never forget. The day you met me? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep, drove down all the way down to St. Louis to bowl this up-and-coming tournament. Oh, yeah, that's right. Going to be going to pay a ton of money. It's going to be lots of bowlers and then only 90, eight, 97. 97. Then it grew into something really huge. And then people got involved. And are you ever going to have another inside bowling open? I don't know. I don't know. I, when you look at my list of priorities, and responsibilities, it's not high up there anymore. Well, your your life has changed quite a bit since those days back mm -hmm. when you were doing that. It put me on the map. Put you on the map, led to some big things for you. You do a, you do a lot in bowling now. Yeah. And it's great to see somebody that works so hard chase their, you know, you, you chase your dream in another way. I chased mine, you know, and d doing good. Yeah, I tried to figure out ways to turn more people on to th what this is so that other people have opportunities. Carved out a nice niche for myself. Um, not complaining at all. You, you know, not to kind of change the subject here a little bit, but you are the one that's doing all those one-shot videos. Did you do the one with Ronnie and Tommy in the old bowling center? Yeah, so... That, that is I, really cool. I can't take all the credit for it. Um, 
but it was one of those things where uh, there was a here's a little look inside of uh, my other part of my job is you know I have this relationship with Evanite International where you know my company is the inside bowling believe it or not is the name of the company uh, is contracted to do social media for Evanite International plus I'm highly involved in a lot of the you know decision making I have a voice in the room type of thing and video work there's a guy named Danny that works at, at EBI awesome dude Danny does Val. great work you yeah, Danny Val yep. but but handling four brands of ad sheets four brands of videos four brands four brands of all these different responsibilities that he does websites all this different stuff is just too much to put on one person so with the increase in video and stuff uh, they had asked me if I would help find or source a video person and I found a guy named Corey off YouTube um, and I met him through a YouTube person that I watched and interviewed him and he's 20 years old and EBI basically said well we'll pay your company for this video person you manage him and you manage the video projects but it's never a one-man show I mean right. we, we have meetings and there's six seven eight people in the room every time we talk about ideas and you know it's got to be a, a decision a joint decision on what we're going to do but Technically, you know, the video work, most of it. Danny still does some, by the way. I like to try to keep him involved because he does good work. And those are fun projects to work on. So, uh, so yeah, so we were uh, – Corey came on board back in October of last year. And, you know, there were a couple ball releases. The Verdict Pearl and the Gate GB3 um, were coming out. And Corey said to me – that's my video guy. He said, you know, they're, they're doing these one-take wedding videos and these one-take – music videos where it's just one continuous take of the whole thing and Ebonite had been doing these tripod one complete game videos already so we thought what if we take that from a tripod to constantly moving around on the lanes and you get to see how the ball performs over the course of an entire game then of course I throw in my little things where like let's have a cameo you know where Tommy makes a cameo in the middle of it throws one shot and Ronnie calls him a club player and you know, Mike Mike Wolf comes in in the middle of a Ronnie video. You know, so there's just all these funny little things that we try to tie in. So we're uh, we're going to be uh, shooting one. The next one's going to have Jason Couch in it, just to let people get ready for this. Uh, Spoiler alert. Yep. And and uh, Jason Couch is going to have three cameos in his, I believe. And I'll just leave it at that. Three cameos. Anytime you can get Jason Couch in a video, you're doing pretty good. Tom, who do you think the three cameos would be? Three cameos for Jason Couch. Mike Wolf. Uh, oh. They're not people. <laughs> They're not people. And I'm just going to leave it at that. We don't have to discuss it anymore. <laughs> well, I want to see this. I'm, I'm anxious to see this. You have to check that out. That'll be on the Ebonite page, I'm sure. Yep. Post it all over. Any idea? So it's going to be cool. It's going to be really cool. That, that, that sounds like it's going to be really cool. So, yeah, so my company technically handles the video shoots, and Corey is the one that shoots them, edits them. I help with the conceptualiz conceptualization of the videos. I'm there with a lot of the scripting. I'm on set to, to make sure the players are delivering things the right way. And then Corey makes a cut, sends it to me. I tell him what to change, what to move, let's do this. But, uh, yes, those videos, I have a I have a role in those videos. Well, that, that one was really cool because it was in one of the old bowling centers right around Nashville, wasn't it? Yeah, Donaldson Bowl. Yeah. It's actually funny to tell people a little bit behind the scenes even more. Uh, we were going to go shoot at Pinewood Social, which is a really cool place that there was a music video shot in with Cole somebody. He's a country music star. Cole Swindell. Might be that one. Yeah, yeah. My, I've got some friends from home that have been to that Pinewood Social. They said it was really cool. So we called them, and, and it didn't seem like it was going to be a problem. They called me the, the day before and said, yeah, we can't do this. We've had too many video shoots in here. So I had to huh. find a substitute location, and I, and I wanted to go someplace kind of old, and uh, Donaldson Bowl was very accommodating. They were awesome. But when we got there... Just so you know, the lanes are very dry. So I actually hand oiled the lanes that day huh. for the video shoot. Because that's what you get when you go into these places. So nice. I did it with towels and, and oil and a squirt bottle and oiled the lanes for those guys. 
And then um, – and Tommy couldn't believe it. Tommy Jones was like, this is not going to work. You want this ball to perform, and I, I got the leans pretty good. I got them yeah. pretty good that day. And then uh, then we just did a Diana shoot uh, a few weeks ago at Bowl Lounge uh, down in Dallas. Bowl Lounge. Bowl Lounge, which is another one of those types of places. And we had to hand oil the lanes there as well <laughs> for the Savage video shoot. So there's some behind the scenes for you guys into the world of bowling. Did miss anything in there? Booth house ball challenge after C squad. Ralph wants to know. Uh, not from this guy. I'd be more. I'd be more than happy to do it. By but, the end uh, of C squad, this guy's going to be in bed. He's going to turn him to go try to win tomorrow. So Tom Hess here in the booth. I'm Mike Flanagan. You're watching the B squad. We'll have a C squad for you later as well. Streaming on Facebook today. This is not normal. We're normally on YouTube. All the footage will be archived on YouTube. Brian Zager's going to be making a nice little run here. Just had 260, 228 in the eighth with a spare up in the ninth. Pretty good, <clears throat> pretty good pair there, actually. Here's the uh, Diana video. That's the uh, place. Did you have anything to do with her other one where she got the ball delivered to her, or was that all her? No, that was all her. That was that was pretty cool. Yeah, that one was all her. Yeah, you can go check out that Savage video over on the Columbia 300, either YouTube page or Facebook page. It's a pretty cool video we shot with Diana. She's just a really cool human being, too. She's on the lane. She's uh, she's a little bitchy. She'll tell you she's a little bitchy on the lanes, but she wants to win every time. <laughs> you know, there's nothing wrong with that. No, but off the lane, she's a softy. She's got a big heart. She loves animals, dogs, and will do anything for a friend or anyone. She'll sit there and sign autographs, talk to people about whatever you want to talk about. She's an awesome human being. But on the lane, she, she, she's a little bit like Pete Weber, where, you know, she could be viewed as just not somebody that you necessarily like. She's got a unique look and style, but um, she owns up to it, and that's who she is. She's an awesome person. You know, that's one of the good things and the bad things about our sport. You can get so close to us when we're bowling that, <clears throat> you know, I mean, you can actually – you know, you can hear us talking. So if, if you only see us when we're performing, you can actually have a completely different perspective of how we are off the lanes. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a prime example of it because when I'm out there, I'm out there to win. I'm out there to make friends. I'm out there to chit-chat and have a good time. Right. And uh, I put a lot of put a lot of, have a lot of expectation, I guess, is the way to put it on mm -hmm. myself. And when those expectations aren't being met, I can, I can outright, you know, be rude, a – doesn't make it right, doesn't make it wrong. I mean, I wish it didn't happen, but it is me, and it what it's what makes me me. Um, and it's the same thing with Pete. I mean, you know, lo lots of us are, are like that. When they're on the lanes, I mean, you know, we're performers. We got to go perform. We got to go do what we got to do to make us be at our best. But off the lanes, you know, give us some time. Come meet us. Come say hi. You, you'll have a. Most of those people that you don't like when they're bowling on the lanes, you would have a completely different view of them if you uh, met them on the lanes. You know another good one? Really good friend of mine, Sean Rash. Yep. Sean works endless, endless hours promoting the sport of bowling. But they've seen the interactions that he's had with Belmonte, and, and, they, and they don't like him. You know, Sean is very confident, very cocky, and at one time, you know, I mean, He'll even tell you right now he's not he's not where he was five or six years ago when he was, you know, one of the top two on the ten, one of the top two on the planet. He's still a top ten probably, you know, in the planet. Sure. But uh, you know, the the people don't see they don't see the behind the stuff that this that this guy does, all the time that he spends away from his family, not only bowling but actually growing the sport of bowling, doing camps and clinics all over the world. Finishing up down here on lanes 13 and 14, Tony Miller. 
Perro Duderick, Andrew Tomley, and Joe Nolan. Good shot by Joe. He's struggling today. Ryan Zager did throw the double on the top for uh, 257. So he went 264, 257 the last two. That'll put him right at 100 over after three. Here's the question. Will you have the lead after this squad? Will I have the lead? Well, I was plus 95 after three. Danny's already 120. So he's got, he's got to go 100 over the back five. No. Dan's a pretty good player. I think he catches me. Unless he has a front six or seven a couple of times and you get that camera out. That I might oh, that's true. I just get the camera out and jinx him. <laughs> Evidently, it didn't work last time, but, you know, you tried. It just didn't connect. That, see, if it would have connected, he would have never had 300. I think you're right. As a matter of fact, I know you're right. Looks like we got, uh, this is the big, so this is game. Game four. Game four, yeah. So this is the big skip. So now we got... Uh, this is the skip three game. Over here on the left side of your screen, looks like we've got Nick Heilman, Rob Warren. Jeff Shway. And I don't know, Brandon Biondo's down there, but I don't know if he's bowling. Oh no, that's Dan Lemice. Danny's bowling with him. That's his pair. Yep. Looks like Brandon Biondo and A.J. Chapman must be waiting to come over here to 9 and 10. Tom, I super appreciate you sitting in here with me, man. Oh, not a problem, man. I enjoy it. Enjoy hanging out with you guys. It's one thing I've always tried to do is have an open booth. There used to be, remember back in the day, we'd have eight people in a booth oh, yeah. handing off microphones. <laughs> I remember one year, one year at the holiday doubles. <laughs> I mean, there was people there was people talking into other people's microphone. At that time, you had another microphone. Yeah. People talking into the microphone. Yeah. My man, GG3. It's just, not, it's just not quite like that anymore when it first started out. You know, it's it's... Like I was telling you earlier, it's become more of like a, it's more of a business. Well, yeah, I mean, you've grown now, you know what yeah. I mean? You, you know, back then it was kind of let the strings go, you know what I mean? Yeah, People really didn't care about the, you know, we didn't watch the language as much back then. I know, and, I know. You know, um, it was a bunch of guys getting together, having fun, and that led to this. You were now, yeah. I mean, it's a business. I mean, you do this, you take it seriously. We still have a good time. Sure. You yeah. know, yeah. But, but it's much more serious. And it's, I mean, it's, it's easy, but it's hard. You know, we're sitting here talking. Right. Um, but trying to keep the people interested, you know, they'd probably rather we just shut up and talk about what's actually going on on the screen bowling, but. During qualifying, I, I never do that. You know. But during, during act, when it, tomorrow I do, like, people know we get serious when we need to get serious. Oh, yeah, especially when it gets right down to it tomorrow, you'll. You'll be running around here, you know, chasing scores. Yep, so who's going to make it? Who's going to make it? Who's yeah. not? You know, who's shooting the big game to get in? Who's who's struggling and might fall out, you know, you know, for the for the cut to the top ten? For those at home that don't know, um, three squads today, seven games a squad. Uh, full field is 180. Looks like we're going to be just short of that. Um, I don't know this year if Joe will take. 60 bowlers, he normally takes 60 bowlers to tomorrow. We bowl six games, six more games tomorrow with the pins carrying over. And then the top 10 
um, advance with the top four being automatically seated right to the stepladder. Um, seven bowls, 10 and eight bowls, nine in a one game match. Winner moves on to bowl five and six. The winners of that match bowl each other to get the fifth seed uh, for the stepladder. Pretty interesting format. It is, and we move pairs after every game during the step ladders too. Oh. So, Tom, do you know what the berries means in bowling? It's kind of like having the nut. Yeah, yeah. You know, just having it all. So Brad and Kyle decided they were going to make some merch and sell it on InsideBowling.com. You know, not, not to interrupt, there's another couple of kids that are working hard. Yeah. You know, young men, they're not kids. You know what I mean? Well, like, when, you're old, when you're as old as I am, everybody's a kid. So they make this T-shirt design, which I have on the screen now, called The Berries. And Dan Limish bought this shirt to support their channel, and he's wearing it today in bowl 300. So he the, has the berries. the berries. Look at that. There's the shirt. There's the model walking with it. He bowled 300 today. So basically, if you buy this shirt and enter a tournament and it's live streamed on Inside Bowling, your ball reaction, you're going to have the berries and you're going to bowl 300. Need one of those overnighted from Utah. Give we, can, call. we can get you one of those. Give them a call. We, we can get you one of those. How much you need? So the berries is the design here. Need, how much you need? I got, got, got my wallet out here. <laughs> Get that baby overnighted. Can you can you slap an Ebonite logo on it so I don't get in trouble? Yeah, we could probably, yeah, we can put that on there. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty funny. So you can say you can buy that shirt right now on InsideBowling.com, and you can buy it, and you can save 15% with coupon code Facebook. I've been told by my merch team that I need to promote our website sales more. But I have a really hard time asking people for money. But they are a really good quality shirt, though. They, they, I'm, you know, I'm not saying that just because you're my buddy, but they are very comfortable shirts. Soft. Yep. They don't, they don't hurt your neck, give you any rug burn or anything. Very comfortable. I'm trying to get caught up on the chat. My computer's running a little slow with all the stuff I have going on. That's all right. It matches us. We're running a little slow. Let's see. Laura Stone's watching. Hi, Laura. Is You're not here with Andy? She said she uh, she can't be there today. Jason Ushwal from uh, the Bradley Tournament says, how are you doing, Mike? Your live streams and commentary from people like you and Tom uh, are having now is what keeps everyone tuning into your streams. Thanks, buddy. Um, yeah, I think I'm pretty much caught up here. When is the Bradley this year, Mike? Do you know the date? Yeah, it's Super Bowl weekend. Super Bowl weekend. Yeah. Is that gonna is that gonna conflict at all with the uh, with the new PBA tour? No, it's Super Bowl weekend because it won't conflict. Okay. So that's what he did. But however, I, I this is like probably ninety percent sure. But because we handle the PBA social media also, and with my commitments with EBI with covering the tours, I'm super super busy the first few months of the year, and I have like one weekend off in the first three months of the year. That one? Super Bowl weekend. <laughs> and, you know, I don't get to celebrate many holidays and stuff because there's always stuff going on. Um, so Jason's been asking me if I can commit to that event, and I keep telling him, I don't think so, bud. I don't think so, bud. It's not set in stone yet that I'm not going to stream the Bradley, but it's very likely that I'm not going to be able to stream the Bradley this year, and, and I'm not happy about it, but... It's just one of those things I just can't 
I, I, I feel awful, actually. Like, I don't even know what to say about it. I might be able to uh, to make the return trip back over there this year, Sheila. Well, you should. It should it should get support. It's uh, No, it's a great event. Um, the reason that I haven't bowled it the last couple of years is because there has been one of the a Greater Iowa, um, the Fort Dodge Ford uh, Calisisi Chiropractic Open has been on the same date as the Bradley. Um, you know, doesn't doesn't pay near what the Bradley does. But there's also a points list for this event, and uh, pride myself on trying to bowl them all and win the points every year. Um, but no, I've been to the Bradley a couple of years. I wish I'd have drug my bowling balls behind the car all the way when I drove. They uh, back in years past. I mean, it's been three or four years since I've bowled now, probably. But uh, they used to be slick. Back when uh, making your spares was huge, you know, I kind of got I kind of got a different opinion about the um, tournaments like that. Well, that particular tournament, one of the reasons I, I quit going is, and not that I doubt my ability, but I didn't think that I would ever be able to win an event like that because okay. I can't get my ball to hit, you know, when the when the lanes are that long. Yeah. Can I make some good money? Could I cash? Yeah, I'm a great spare shooter. I keep the ball in play. Um, as a matter of fact, I never went there and didn't make it to Sunday. But I just, you know, didn't feel like I could ever win because I can't get get my ball to tip like the other guys do. That's kind of how I feel on tour right now with that big old pile of yeah. oil they put at the end of the lane. You know, I was I forget who I was talking with the other day, but you know, it would be nice to go down on tour and be able to throw it hard up the right side of the lane for a month. You might see a little bit different leaderboard. But they, uh, they do do a great job out there in uh, Lexington. Lexington, right? Yeah, it's in Lexington. Yeah. I, I wanted to say Louisville for some reason, but yeah. Well, it was. I think it, that, that tournament's moved around a little bit because the Collins closed a bowling center. Yeah, it was at Eastland is, is yeah. where I bowled. Had some good success in there. Won the Friday Night Sweeper one year. How is Andy Buelo bowling? Oh, Andy was really struggling earlier when we watched. I had that question. He was on chat. 11 and 12. He was not bowling good. Yeah, we don't want to talk about it. Yeah, it wasn't good. You can go over on Twitter and see how he's bowling. <laughs> he's on page two. <laughs> Start at the bottom. So what are we on here? The dual screen. So we got Rob Warren. Nick Heilman, Jeff Shway, Dan Lamise on the left, Mike McWealthy, um, Tammy, I can't remember Tammy's last name. Um, Brandon Biondo. Walsh, and Tammy Walsh. Tammy Walsh, that's right. And uh, Brandon Biondo and A.J. Chapman. Going to be a bird showing up at A.J.'s house here pretty soon. Got it with the gentleman that owns the pro shop in this bowling center that we're sitting in. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yep. He stepped up there and threw three of the best shots that, uh, well, I mean, you can't say best shots, I guess, but three absolutely ultimate dead high flush shots to take over the lead, and it held on to win. They had a oh, couple of months left, I think, when they bowled. You had a chance at all events, Eagle, didn't you? Yeah, so did he. That's part of the reason I was watching. <laughs> because he had a really good chance to go around me. I ended up finishing third this year. It's going to suck, but it's kind of a disappointing third. Yeah. You know, I had... Everybody keeps going back to the stone nine. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a good shot. It could have struck, could not. But the one that ultimately cost me was in the seventh frame when I went 4-4. The only, the only shot of singles that didn't get nine and it got four. Yeah. Uh, is what it is, you know. Here's Dan Lemish. See if he's still got the berries. Well, he had 2-0 last game. But he's got a much better look this game. Jen just brought us the scores. Game three, your leader, Dan Lemise. 
124 over. Second, Ryan Zegger, 98 over. Brandon Biondo, who's just getting ready to shoot a spare here on uh, lane nine, wearing his Cubs jersey. Good guy, Brandon. He's third at 84 over. Tanya came back with a nice game. She's 76 over in, in fourth. Running out the top five is Mark Stenger at 70 over. Steve Taylor at 69, the always impressive. Nick Heilman at 64. Ki, Ki Hyo Kyun at 60 over. Kevin Duncan, 45. Dave Axon at 36 over, rounding out your top 10. There are now 18 people plus on this squad. Let's just scroll through here. Uh, Two-time champion Casey Murphy is in 12th at 26th. Um, Robert Morris's Michael Martell and Billy Hibbard from St. Ambrose are tied at 23. And in 13th, uh, Rob Warren, who is on the, just threw a shot there on lane eight. Rob is at 21 over. Uh, St. Ambrose's Brent Boho at 13. Good buddy Tom Adcock at plus 12. AJ Chapman, who's right here in front of us, is at 17 under right now. You can screenshot these standings right now. They're on the screen. I'm going to take them down in five, four, three, two, one. Hey, Rob Amers is leading something. <laughs> He's on the top of the back page. Way to go, Robbie. Every time I see Mike McWethy, I think it's Stevie Weber. <laughs> Stevie's over in Japan now. Yeah, he's doing well from what I hear. Is he running the center? Is that why he went over there? Yeah, I think so. Pretty nice gig if you can get it. Since, since there's going to be so many openings on Z-Squad, i got a deal for you. I will run the booth. You shoe up and bowl. I'll bowl. I will bowl. I don't know what I'm going to use for a ball to find. Well, Huck, I watched a couple years ago. I'd use an 8-pound house ball. Or wait, no, you threw a 15-pound, wasn't it? What did you it throw? Was, no, it was 14. 14. Or, huh? Orange one, yeah. holding it upside down with just two fingers and a conventional drill. Well, they probably got it down here. I, I kind of do have the itch to bowl. I should bowl two-fingered two because I can't get a thumb to fit me anymore. <laughs> So I went to St. Louis last month to bowl his no-tap tournament. The guy, Pero, by the way, who's bowling this event, uh -huh. uh, he was on my pair. So I get there, and I bring in I bring in two balls. I bring in a Game Breaker 3 and a Purple Hammer, right? Woodhouse, I only got to get nine. What difference does it make, right? Right. Now, I haven't been bowling, and that's kind of an embarrassment, like how, how bad my timing is and stuff. I put my hand in the ball, and it fit really good, really good. And I threw about 11 shots of practice. Now, granted, they are dead walled. I mean, ridiculously walled. And okay. the pin carry is unbelievable. I struck every shot. Every, not even like the first one that I went up and limped up. No, I struck every ball. Every ball. They turn the lights on. I go front three, gutter, and a no-tap. That doesn't normally add up very well. No, I couldn't. I started not being able to get out of the ball. I couldn't get out of it. My thumb swelled up. I was in humidity in St. Louis. I'm used to living in Utah, and I just couldn't get out of it. I hung up on all these shots. So if I'm going to bowl this tournament tonight, I don't think using a thumb is a good idea. I mean, I can shoot a spare with a thumb in there. If I bowled with a house ball and I made the cut, 
what would that what would that do? Would it hurt entries or increase entries? Would people say, "Oh, well, if you can bowl with a house ball, then anybody could do it." Probably increase entries. Or would it or would it hurt entries like probably make a lot of people oh. think, "Why the heck am I bringing all these bowling balls when well, all I got to do is pick one off the rack?" <laughs> I do have. I do want to bowl this tournament sometime. Actually, this reminds me of a great story about this gentleman's father. I was. It was very early in my PBA career. Brandon Biondo's Brandon dad. Brandon Biondo's Vince. dad, Vince. Yeah. We were bowling. Uh, I want to say it was in Bol at Boulevard, up in Madison. It was it Boulevard or Schwegler's? And uh, Vince was was not bowling all that great. He went and grabbed a blue hammer, off the rack and ended up making the cut. It was unbelievable. John Weber made him weigh it, obviously, to make sure it was good because he pulled it off the rack. Pretty impressive, pretty impressive feat. I'm actually seriously thinking about this now. So I was just about to ask you, do you have a urethane ball with you? I do not. But here's the thing. I don't even think if you had a urethane ball with you that I could even use it. Why? Well, I'm just thinking, you were telling me that you were starting to drill balls for the new USBC rules. Yeah. And if I didn't use the thumb. Well, no, but I've got others. I mean, actually, all of my urethane balls are for the old But rules. in two years, I couldn't. In two years, you won't be able to. No matter how it's drilled, because I wouldn't be using that hole. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. I couldn't even pick a house ball off the rack and bowl, because I wouldn't be using the other hole. It's funny you, you, you talk about that, because I'm thinking, you know, I'm just wondering. So, if a guy uses an it... Doesn't have a weight hole now. Sometimes wants to bowl with his thumb in, thumb, sometimes wants to bowl with his thumb out. You can't. What if you had the solid thumb hole Ooh. that you just screwed, that you didn't actually have a hole drilled, and you somehow didn't. figured out a way to get it in and get it out without oh. actually putting a hole in it? That's one I haven't heard yet. I'm going to send a text off and try to get an answer to that. Because technically, if you take the if you take the the thumb slug, fur in it, and don't drill a hole in it, and put it in the ball, you know, might be might be hard to get in and out. You know, you'd have to make sure it was really loose so you could just, you know, put your thumb on top of it and spin it and spin it out. That's a really good question. Hello to Linda Keeler. Sue's been in and Hi, out. Hi, Linda. James Rice, Matt McNeil's watching now, Nico Puhar. How's Steve doing? Let's tell Linda how Steve's doing. That's probably who she's checking in for. Where is he at? Are you missing him? Oh, 47th, minus 81 after oh. two. Doesn't seem quite right. No, that's a shock to me. I would not have guessed that. Let's see. I do have standings after three right here. Minus 115 after three for Keeler. I bet he'll. Re I bet he will re bowl. Be a, I, you know, it's going to be interesting. There's going to be a lot of people re bowl. I. I mean, I hope for for Joe's sake. Um, all the work that they do, you know, the money that they get from the Waterloo um, Visitors and Convention Bureau, you know, to all of a sudden have this entry, you know, be 30 short would not be good. So I hope we at least get up to 160, 165 entries. I'll tell you, if I bowl, I'll make the cut. What would the odds be on that? I watched you do it for one game on the burn. It was pretty impressive. Yeah, to do no. it for seven games? Oh, my gosh. I mean, there's got to be a 130 game in there somewhere, right? <laughs> I mean, I got to go. <laughs> which, gotta, I mean. If I go 100, if I pull 130, I'm 70 under. And I got to I gotta be 40 over for the other six. It's 
So average 207 with a 130 game. I guess you could say I could, I could shoot two 160s. You're not going to shoot 130. Come on. I don't know, man. They're flat, dude. Here's the thing. If I got a little bit of free hook to the right, then I'm in good shape. But here's the thing. I'd have to play fallback. I'm not going to have much hitting power playing fallback. A little plastic house ball? Fall back. Oh, it'll, it'll shred them. Dude, I, I have to try to leave a four pin every time. I don't know, man. I think I could leave some five, eight, tens, especially with the lighter weight. How about the, this pattern? Does not. I mean, I, I, if you bowl and you make the cut, I'll never ask you for a job with inside bowling again. <laughs> if you bowl and you don't make the cut, you have to give me a job. Okay, and then let's make one other deal. If I bowl you for the title and I beat you, you got to give me your prize money too. Deal. <laughs> Easy enough. That sounds that sounds like a good deal. Oh, that is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> or if I bowl you for the title, you have to chop with me. <laughs> I would do that. I don't. I wouldn't even know how the stream would work if I made the the, the TV finals. <laughs> Well, you got to come back in between shots. No, you have to get a longer microphone. Yeah. And commentate while you're bowling. Yeah, that would be it. You have to. You have to. As you're on the approach, you have to tell us what you're thinking. So I'm up. What you, What you're gonna do? <laughs> how you're gonna attack the lanes? I'm up. I just watched my last <laughs> shot. I threw it like a donk. <laughs> boy, I bet, I bet. boy, if I was Mike, the ratings would go up. Let me tell you. I bet I'm gonna move two and one here. <laughs> I'm gonna move two and one left and miss an arrow right. I think with a house ball, I, I'd probably play about 17 to 14. Yeah. With a lot of speed, a lot of revs. Would it hook? Eventually. 17 to 14 with that. You know. Or yeah. would I need to be more like 17 to 16? You, you, yeah, yeah, probably 17 to 18. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It, it, you know, it, it, it would hook when it hit the when it hit the kickback. Adam Johnson says 1400 to one would be the odds. 1400 to one. Now he's got me. He's just trying to get me to bowl. Ooh. You see Chapman's ball? How it hooked? My house ball wouldn't hook there. No, 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 it would have pushed. Yeah, house would've. ball would have pushed right through that spot. Yeah, where he just threw that, I would have probably struck. Yep. I'd have got more than eight. I'd have yeah. got nine it at least. It would have pushed through. It wouldn't have went high. Right. Probably yeah. would have hit light, swished him around. I, I think you're right. Yeah. And by the way, for 1400 to one, I'll take you for $2. Yeah, I will. I'll take myself <laughs> too. <laughs> There's Dan Limish wearing his Barry shirt. Second shot in the tenth. See, my house ball would it wouldn't it have done that. Through that. All these guys are getting too much hook down lane. Way too much hook. You know what I think would work well? Two fingered, uh, fourteen pounder, Manhattan rubber. Oh. Weber, little, star. little bit of an earlier roll. Yeah. You know, not too, not too strong down lane. You're gonna shine it, or you're gonna sand it. Box. Box. Yeah, just box. <laughs> what is box on there? <laughs> <laughs> what was box back then? I think it's extra tread. <laughs> <laughs> Snow tire. Racing slick. Yeah. No, I, I like this idea. <laughs> It's amazing how your mind I works. would probably quit. I, I'd, I'd probably bowl like three games, shoot 480, and be like, okay, that was fun. <laughs> Back to the booth. Who are you going to tag in? you got to pick somebody out of the crowd. Probably Jennifer. <laughs> Bolt State with them. Did you really? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so hard for me to commit to a state team tournament because I don't uh, – don't know what my schedule is going to be, you know, when they when they need it. So Joe needed us up. Decided to bowl. Want want to take any guess on uh, of the ten of us who was high in team? Oh boy, Jennifer. Yes, she was. Want to take a guess at who was high in singles? You. 
Jennifer. <laughs> really? <laughs> yep. She pretty much put it on the boys all weekend. I don't know if you know, Jen's an athlete. She's, yeah. I think she still plays softball. She's a really good athlete. You know, she's she's kind of like her dad, you know, up behind the back of it. You know, she throws a little harder than Joe, but she's got a good role. Is it just me, or does it smell like... Nibs licorice all of a sudden. It sure does. <laughs> Who's got them? Is that, that it's gotta be Sheila's. It's gotta be oh, toenail painting going on. It smells like licorice. <laughs> I'm getting an answer to the question Kay. from earlier. Who are, you, who are you texting? Uh, Chad Murphy. Oh. <laughs> hey, hey, I mean, you know, if you're going to go, go big, right? Yeah. Go get, go, go right to the boss. I asked Chad Murphy, I said, hey, with the new rules, let's say you bowl with your thumb in, but also like to bowl two-fingered. If you use an IT or switch grip, can you put in a solid thumb slug in that spot and use with two fingers? Did I explain that properly? Yeah. yeah. Here he comes. He's typing away. There we go. We're going to get an answer. Brandon Biondo here. Needs this one for 240. Push, push, push. See, your house ball. My house put, ball. It carries that. It would have. Oh, yeah, there's no way a house ball hooks left of the nine there. Do no they, chance. Do they have Maxims in the pro shop here or White Dots? Oh, I bet you Rich is going to. I bet I could uh, drill one. I'll buy it. Go get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not paying you, I'm not paying your entry, but I'll buy the White Dot. I think the only camera we're going to use is this mobile one. We're going to follow you every game. We're not going to talk about anybody else. I need to sand the ball, though. It's going to be the Mike Flanagan show. I need to take it to about two. 2000. Actually, I want to take some screen to it and then take it up to 2000 from a screen. Let's go throw it on the parking lot a couple shots. Yeah. Anything going on in the chat? I mean, if these people are going to listen to us, we should at least. Uh... Megan oh! says hi. Oh, hi, Meg. Monty says the uh, Black Beauty would be good. We're, we're sitting here talking about entries of the tournament, and there's. There's a few spots open, and Tom had said something about me bowling, and now I'm seriously considering it. I opened up a can there, didn't I? Yeah. We'll, uh, we're heading into game number five. Nobody's bowling, so we'll bring it into the booth. I have... Hi, Megan, if you're still watching. Bowl good tomorrow, sweetheart. In my phone, I have the answer. I have not read it yet, but Tom earlier... Brought up a great point with the rules, the new USBC rules that if you bowl with you know your thumb in the ball and you only have the three holes in there, the new rule is you cannot you have to use all the holes every time. Yep. So Tom said if you have a switch grip or an it that goes into the thumb hole, can you just get one that's completely solid, put that in there and then use it with two fingers? So I sent a text message. I to wouldn't know why you couldn't. I mean, well, we're, we're going to find out with Chad Murphy, United States Bowling Congress. Here we go. He says, technically, I believe the answer is no because the slug leaves a void at the bottom of the hole. Would want to ask the guys before I said for sure. So it's still open-ended. It, but it, but in the, they don't leave a void in the bottom of the hole. I don't know. That's interesting. That's what Quite I just fun. said. Okay, interesting thought. I'm going to send him a little thanks as well. So anyway, there you have it. That's uh, Mythbusters. If you guys need anything else solved or an answer to a rules question, um, anything USBC related, we have a direct line today. You know, 
Chad, when he gets on, you know, he hasn't been on Facebook in quite a while because I think he took a little bit of a beating. But when he was saying, call me, you want to talk, call me, you want to talk, he would put his number out there. Um, every time I've texted Chad with a question, you know, called him with some concerns, uh, always, always willing to listen, doesn't always agree, always willing to listen, Yep, and uh, always takes the call. So there we have it. That's a real, I mean, that's, that's a pretty good question. You know, I wonder what he's calling the void because I don't, I don't know how well you know, but the, the vice, the it's, so you drill a, you drill the, the thumb, thumb slug and then you drill a half inch hole that that actually s slides down into and then there's a molly that they beat down in it to expand it to hold the bottom of the it in. So there yeah. technically isn't a void in the bottom of the hole. There could be just a slight fraction. Yeah, I, I mean, suppose. Technically there's a hole around the, you know, there's a slight crack. So what if there's a slight crack in a bowling ball? Yeah, it's so illegal it? then? I don't know. Yeah. That's this is an interesting deal here. But uh, there's there are a handful of people that, that throw it with two fingers and then they throw it their spare with the same ball with their thumb in it. Oscu oh. and Doherty, right? Oscu Yeah, yeah, I think I know Doherty does. I know that at single pins when he throws it straight, he obviously puts his thumb in it. I'm pretty sure Oscu does as well. Well, he has to. That man. Have you ever seen him shoot a spin? Yes. <laughs> it's a Weber Cup. There's a. It's a special one-lane installation. And I was told by these guys, and I don't believe they'd pull my chain, but they used to have to leave a forklift backed up because they don't bolt everything down. You know what I mean? It's just a one one installation. So for the actual pin spotter, they don't bolt it down to the floor. They had to leave the forklift backed up to the pin spotter because when he was throwing at single pins, he would hit it so hard that it would scoot the pin spotter away from the Wow. Line. Folks in the chat want me to bowl tonight. Says uh, Monty says we should start a GoFundMe for your ball. Uh, Greg Engelke says, hey, they have EBI demo balls in the pro shop, Mike. Just have them set you up. That's a really good there point. There you go, I go in and get a whole arsenal. There you go. Could you imagine, I'd actually, if I won a tournament, I'd put that on social media since I handle those accounts. I would be talking all about me for a full day. <laughs> Mike Shocker. Flanagan wins, no way. wins Fusion Realtors Community First National Bank Open with EBI demo balls. That might be the story of the year. Just think of what you could do, man. Just bust out that 100, uh, 170 bucks because you got to pay your $10 membership fee. I'll, I'll, hey, here's the deal. I'll cover your membership fee. Uh, 170. So you're looking at 160. I'll cover the $10 membership fee for you. Man. You know we're gonna we're also gonna have to discuss because you know that I, if I'm gonna actually broadcast a third of the event. Right. What's your cut? <laughs> you know, I know. I, mean, I know. You know. I mean, you know me, Mike. I'm always working, man. Well, you're gonna be upside down. I'm going to have to pay you for the privilege to sit yeah. in for you? Okay. Well, I'm already upside down on this thing because <laughs> today I upgraded to Wirecast 10.1, and it was $449. What's that? Is the it software because okay. I was trying to get it to communicate with YouTube, and I, I had 7.7. .7. That's only a year and a half old, and they've already released three new versions. So I'm like, maybe I have to upgrade. So I paid the $449 oh. to upgrade the software. And that didn't fix it? No. Probably still a good investment, though, you well, I need honestly. it. I, ha I used to upgrade every time, but I haven't been streaming as much. Oh, there's a nice 4-9 conversion by Andrew Stone. That is my holiday doubles partner. Yes, it is. I used to bowl Hard Illinois Youth Classics and Greater Iowa Youth Bowling, whatever it was called. G I you bowled the GISBTs? Yeah. I bowled, I bowled two. Awesome. Yeah. I didn't know that. Those weren't around when I was a youth way back in the day. Yeah, I bowled two of them, and uh, I 
I've told this story a couple times. He watches these a lot of times. Uh, Bobby Worthman, do you know that guy? Yep. I guess I uh, think I'm actually going to bowl state with him this year. Okay. So this guy, so I go to this, you know, I'm this hot shot St. Louis bowler kid, drills all these new balls. You know, I think I am just absolute hot shit. You know, <laughs> like I am, I am it. I am the bee's knees. And I go up to this tournament, this jizbit or whatever it was called. And um, I'm bowling. I, I drilled a, a TKO punch out Triton. At the time, it was like the brand yeah. new ball out. I drilled it, took it up there. And I think I averaged 227. And the person behind me in the standings was averaging like 209. Nice. But I was like 250 out of the lead. Bobby Worthman was his home center. And he averaged like 245. <laughs> I averaged like 227. Closest to me, you know, it was a huge gap. I was in no man's land. Yeah. And I was, man, when I was a kid, I was such a jackass. So I, uh, the tournament's when, when, over. When you were a kid? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> okay. I finished second. I finished second, right? It was still a great tournament. You know, Eric ran the event, everything was great. And so this Bobby Worthman guy comes up to me, and I don't know this guy. Just skinny, lanky kid, you know, throws it good. I mean, he really bowled good. And I don't even remember what I said to him. But he sees me at a tournament, like last year. He sees me at a tournament comes up to me. Holiday doubles, I think. He goes, hey, Mike, how's it going, man? He's like, I'm so proud of what you've done with your career and stuff. He's like, I still remember bowling against you at that tournament where, you know, you came in and you should have won if I didn't show up. I'm like, yeah. He's like, I'll never forget what you said to me after at the end of that tournament. Uh-oh. And uh, and I said, oh, yeah, what did, what did I say? Because I really don't know what I said. <laughs> okay? Lord only knows. He said, you walked up to me and you inspired me. And I'm like, oh, boy. <laughs> he said, you came up to me and said, anybody can win in their home house. Let's see you go get one on the road. And I'm just sitting here thinking to myself, what a jackass. <laughs> why, why would I why, why would I say that? You know, the kid bowled great. Yeah, so what if it's his home house? I dominated tournaments in my home house. I was just angry that I didn't win the tournament. So instead of going down and congratulate him, saying he outclassed the entire field, and I would have won this tournament, but he bowled so great, instead I walk up and make some sort of comment like that. And then he comes back to me years later and tells me that I inspired him by that. I look back at myself, and I just want to slap myself for being that ignorant. I, that, that, I mean, if I knew him and we were boys or something, I could see myself going down and saying that, you know, if we, like, ran around. But I never met this guy before. Yeah. And I, it's just part of growing up. But, uh, anyway, I've seen him since. Super cool guy. We've talked a couple times. And, uh, yeah, that's my that's my Jizbit Greater <laughs> Iowa Youth Bowlers Tour story. <laughs> Um, never won one. I only bowled two events. I cashed in both for scholarship, you know. But you and my daughter have uh, something in common. Two for two? As of right now, your highest finish is second place. Oh, yeah. She just got second last weekend. So pretty cool. Glad everybody's here watching with us. Uh, we haven't done a reset in a while. I'm Mike Flanagan from Inside Bowling. We're streaming on Facebook today because our YouTube channel's having issues communicating with Wirecast. So um, anyway, that's why we're on Facebook, but we'll be archiving everything on YouTube. Uh, Tom Hess has been nice enough to join me in the booth like he does every year. He happened to lead the A squad this morning. Happened to lead the A squad. like that. Like it was an accident. Yeah, he happened to lead. <laughs> Uh, like, like everybody else just didn't show up. I just got done saying that, you know, I used to say some stupid stuff. That's all right. Anyway, he just happened to lead earlier today and uh, by 50 pins, as a matter of fact. Oh, Steve Keeler just boned eight over there. Strike, oh. nine spare, nine spare, nine spare. Such a cruel game. And this tournament would not be possible without Fusion Realtors, Community First National Bank, and the whole other slew of sponsors that we have as well. <laughs> Which are 
Waterloo Convention and Visitors Bureau, Budweiser and Bud Light, Logo Infusion. You can save 20% over there with GIBA2018 is the code. You can save at logoinfusion.com. Kingpin Bar and Grill and Hampton Inn. We also have season-long sponsors that are part of the entire greater Iowa Bowlers Tour, the GISBA. GIBA, uh, the whatever. Greater Iowa Bowling Association. Thank you, GIBA-Bowling.com, yes. I think is the website. You can head over there, find out information about all the other events they run, but uh, Ebonite is the season-long sponsor and Gershman Mortgage. You can make fun of me. Don't make fun of my tour. No, I, did, I, did, I just put an S in there in the middle I could, of it. Yeah, because we were talking about the Greater Iowa Scholarship Bowling Tour. Yeah, tomorrow. that's what it was. That's easy. We'll, we'll let you slide this time. Yeah. But anyway, we were talking about Andy Stone, and I bowled, I bowled against uh, Andy Stone in those events. Okay. The Hard Illinois Youth Classics, too. I also bowled against Jason Guest, Scott Wolwind. Yep, they used to bowl the GISBTs. There was a guy by the name of Chris Ferguson also. Chris who was Ferguson. A, who was a, a left-handed guy. He was African-American, cornrows in his hair. Was an unbelievable left-handed bowler, and he actually lost his life at a very early age. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, he was a phenomenal bowler. From your area? No, no, I just saw him at these tournaments up here. Okay. Then there was a guy from Rockford, Illinois, by the name of Greg Fisher, who was pretty good, too. Jason Jones from uh, Bloomington as well. Yeah. And then Doug Manhart also. Living up in Minneapolis now. Yep, bowled around that time. He's still an EBI guy, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. He was a fun one to watch. He and Art Brown. Art Brown. When they went to Central Missouri. Speaking of Central Missouri, Steve Keeler, who just slapped it out and got the 4-9 to fall after that 8-pin, he went to Central Missouri, and he bowled leadoff on the team and had four lefties behind him the year that they arguably had their best season ever. It was Steve Keeler leading off, and then I believe they had probably Jamie Flynn in the two-hole. In the three-hole was a guy by the name of Nick Farsace. In the four-hole was Art Brown, and in the five-hole was Doug Manhart. Wow, pretty solid team. So Keeler was the lone righty. How often do you think that happens in college bowling nowadays? It doesn't. I don't think it does, unless you take like a really big expanded roster with you. Actually, I'm going to ask Steve who the four lefties were, and I want to see if I got that right. Back, get a little information for I us got here. it. I got it wrong. I got. I was. I was mostly right. Hey, mark this. I want to save this tape. Okay. Because you, you were wrong. Uh, okay, you got it. It's at the 219 mark. Okay. It was not Jamie Flynn that bowled. He was on the team, but he was not the starter. I for. I oh, I forgot about a guy who was a senior the same year Steve was. Who, in my opinion, was a guy that could have. What? That's who I said was the guy. He just said to me, Jamie Flynn was their sixth. Yep. So I was close. Jason Kaiser Jay out of West Allis. I think I've heard of that name. He, he, he was awesome. He was awesome. He was, as, in my opinion, he was as good as Eric Pollock, who went to Wichita. Okay. And Wichita didn't have a lot of lefties bowl. You know, it's funny we're talking about this because um, obviously with my daughter being a freshman and we were paying attention last year, and, you know, Vanderbilt is the NCAA champion from last year. And I think a big reason is that because they had two lefties on the team. Those, yeah. Those two lefties absolutely mauled that pattern in the, in the title match. Yes, they did. So, yeah, Steve Keeler over here, bold college, and, and, and bold with – Jason Kaiser was the anchor, by the way. So it was like, it was like Keeler, Farsace. It was like, it was Keeler, Farsace, then Art Brown, then Doug Manhart, then.
Kaiser. That name sounds so familiar. From West Dallas, Wisconsin? Yeah. I've got to know the kid then. There's Keeler with a Brooklyn. Speaking of left-handers. <laughs> Speaking of left-handers. threw a lefty on purpose. <laughs> Speaking of left-handers, the only left-hander, the only righty that was on the team just hit the left-handed pocket. Right. We started talking about lefties there, Steve. We decided that you hold all these left-handers, and then you go Brooklyn <laughs> for the left-handers' pocket. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't said this yet, but Casey Murphy here has won the tournament twice. I know you talked about it earlier, but he's been on our live stream as well. Eh, who cares? It's up there on lane eight. Nah, just kidding. Casey's a good kid. Not really a kid, but to me he is. Oh, standings after four. I have them right here. I'm going to break ranks and you do it this time? Yeah, Go I'm, ahead. I'm just going to read Get these off. Read them off. So you got Dan Limish is still leading. He's at 144 over. After four, I'm not going to lead. He's yeah. going to go 80 over the last three. And he bowled 300 earlier. So he got 100 of it in one game. Okay. Brandon Biondo is at plus 119. He's in second. Dan Dave Axon on the squad is Speaking third. Speaking of old plus guys. 93. Yeah, Zager's plus 90. Billy Hibbard's in fifth at plus 71. Good Steve job, Taylor's boy. in sixth at plus 64. Mark Stinger is in seventh at plus 60. Eighth is Ki Ho Kyun at plus 54 and eighth. Nick Heilman's ninth at plus 49. Casey Murphy's 10th at plus 47. And still 18 people plus, uh, yeah. 19 even. 19 even or higher. Yeah, Kevin Duncan in 19th is even. Steve Keeler is minus 109. And he can still make the cut. Oh, yeah. Steve starts striking. He can strike the, you know, 119. He's got spare spurt. Oh, no, he doesn't. I'm looking at the wrong guy. He's got a double here. He's still got 230 left this game. Gets him to 80 under with, with uh, two to go. He can shoot 230, 230. Yeah. That, that spare ball he just threw, I think, is a maxim. That'd probably be the one I'd drill. You could use that one. Yeah. He'll probably let you use it. <laughs> well, I don't know. He might be re -bowling if he doesn't get there. Well, I could just run it down to him whenever he needs it. Yeah. Who cares about pace of play? I won't be commentating. Oh, I just thought of something. I use the Black Widow spare ball. So now you can throw plastic with a core. Oh, that's that's the deal. That's what go. I need. There you go. What size finger inserts do you use? Six and four. I think I'd have just enough room in those. Yeah, roomy. Roomy comfort. <laughs> <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be like the exit row. I, I'll tell you what. Well, let you take it into Rich and put in the size you need. Would you let me adjust the surface? Sure. Okay. Plastic, oh. plastic ball. Now, if I make the cut, you don't get to use it tomorrow. That's all right. I don't need it. <laughs> David Henson says, nice bowling today, Tom Hess. Thank you, David. Gonna quit your hotted bike. Yeah, it's not good. No, not at all. Rosie's doing a little housekeeping here, coming through picking up all the sheets. I'll we'll take you back over to 13 and 14. Uh, Brandon Biondo's been down there bowling. He's in second. He's got four baggers, seven two, turkey. AJ Chapman's minus 35 coming into this game. 114 of the sixth. Strike up in the seventh. Make it a double. Hi, Tom. That's my buddy. Tommy and I bowl uh, doubles together at the Greater Ozarks. Do you think that's funny? All these tournaments and all these people bowl doubles with different people and all of them. Yeah. 
You know, I bowled with Tom Adcock once. Yeah. World Team Challenge at Landmark Lanes. Man, I miss those. Those were so much fun. Landmark Lanes. Hold several of those. A high finish. Uh, we got third. A great story about those. Um, the uh, ultimate inferno was the ball. Bowling it, I believe, Landmark Lanes. Getting ready to bowl a match against uh, Pollards. Back then it was Robbie Spigner. I, I think, was I don't remember if Bill was on the team, but it, you know, it was the Pollard boys and Don Scudder. Yeah, the Scud missile. Yep, Scud decides he wants a little surface on his ball, picks it up, scrubs the shit out of it. I go down there, pick up my ball, and all of a sudden, my ball's really goddamn dull. Grab the wrong one. Oh, oh, man. Yep. So Don, you're, you're Don Scudder. Don scuffed. felt so bad. He was, you know. He scuffed your yep. ultimate inferno. Yep. Yep. It's all right, man. They still roll good. It was just kind of funny. Everybody, you know, back then I was a young kid. You know, actually, I think it was. I think I think Joe was one, was on the team with us. Joe and I bowled with Matt Smith and uh, Jason Guest. Oh, who was the other person? But yeah. Thriller going on at Wrigley, it looks like. In the sixth, the game is tied to 0-0. Zero, zero. Well, I was calling Dan to go 80 over. He's got, uh, he's plus 15 in the seventh, but Brandon Biondo is striking a machine down there. Yeah. He's at 119. He's got 260 possibly going in here in the 10th. That would get him to 180 with two to go. Yeah. Brandon's bowling good. Yep. Brandon likes it when he can get in there and wheel on it. David Henson wants to know what you use today. I know we covered it earlier, but you want to go back over kind of what equipment worked well for you today? Uh, started one, one game, rip solid. Switched to the GB3, games two through five. Uh, GB3 Pearl, games six and seven. And actually, if you want to see a picture of the GB3s, they are, uh, they are on my Facebook page. You know what I'll do? I'll get on there and I'll share them to my bowling page too. So if you want to go to Tom Hess Bowling and uh, like that page, you'll be able to see the equipment that I threw today. Tom S. Bowling, you can see pictures of the uh, two GB3s that I, that I threw today. Um, the original GB3 is drilled with the old rules, has a weight hole, so only one ounce of side weight. Um, the new GB3 was drilled under the new rules that came in effect um, August 1st. Has no weight hole. I don't know what the side weight has in it, but I know it's more than an ounce. We must have missed this. Andy Mills put, can you root against Nick Heilman for me? 
What's the matter? Andy, you guys, you, do you not get half of Nick's money this week? I don't know, he may not be listening. That was two hours ago. Yeah, Paul's definitely got more than an ounce of side. Oh, yeah. Is it got like six ounces? <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, inter interesting question. Well, what are they going to do now? Guy shows up to Nationals, he's got three and a quarter ounces of side weight. Can't put a hole in it, make it legal, and throw it. The guy just can't bowl. Guess the ball's garbage. Yep. Can you drill a hole deeper? You could probably, I mean, if it's close enough, yeah. If you, I would think if it was side weight, you could drill the um, ring finger deeper up in that quadrant up in there. I don't know how much that's actually going to um, affect the side weight, but it would have to affect it some. See what Brandon did shoot. He just got done bowling this time frame. We've got kind of sidetracked and we're talking. Uh, nine spare eight for 242 for Brandon. That puts him up to uh, 161 with two to go. Steve Keeler is going to bowl 215 if he spare strikes. So 226 for Casey Murphy. So you said Steven was 115 under, so if he strikes yeah. here, gets him to even. Going to need 240, 240. Steve can do that. Looks like his looks getting a little bit better. Bunch of nine counts up there. He could also go 300, 180. Been there, done that. Yeah, just Thursday night in the league, 300 game one. Yeah, shot 733. Great bowling, Tom. 217, 216. There was a night in league where I bowled 299, 290, and didn't shoot eight. Wow. Hey, I'm just going to let the cat out of the bag. I wouldn't have been a fun guy to be around if that had happened to me. <laughs> it was awful, dude. It was, it was second shift of a league. It was like on the leftover house shot. And I was throwing a track champ. It just tells you the time frame that this happened. Just keep pumping them EBI balls, bud. I bowled 299, 290. And, and I was like, I got already shot 800. I already had like four or five 800s or whatever. So I, you know. And just, dude, the lanes broke down so bad. And I just missed the move. And it was just brutal. Brutal. You know, once you get behind the move in this sport, it's hard to catch back up because it's just so hard to make that big of a move. I bowled 179. 179. That was just brutal. Embarrassing. Happens to the best of us. All right, I'm just going to bring it back in up here. It's me and Tom just hanging out with you guys. Back How are you doing, here. everybody? We got uh, game six coming up next. And then game seven, because it's a seven game block. That's kind of the way it works. Yeah. And we've got tonight more bowling. It was scheduled for 6.30, but probably more like seven. Yeah. Which means, which means it's going to be a late night here. Which means Mike gets to talk more. Yeah, it does. That's all right. It does. I'll probably sit in with you for a little bit. Less people get tired of hearing my voice. I'm bowling. <laughs> I don't Are you doing why. it? I don't know why you're sitting you're doing in. It? Okay. I'm bowling. All right. Okay, well, in between squads here, then I got to <laughs> run out and give me a couple monsters so I can stay awake. 
You can give me a quick tutorial. I mean, if you can do this, I can do this. I mean, it can't be that. Well, it can't uh, be that hard. Yeah, and I, I normally interact with you during bowling, so you, you just know, interact with me. You know, it can't be that hard. Yeah, no, this is easy. Yeah. You just got to get the graphic up all the time. You can't be doing stuff like this. Here we are, game number five, but it's really <laughs> six. So you just got to switch the graphics. I can switch the graphics between games. I don't care what pair I'm on. I'll just come down and change the graphic. Interview I, myself. Well, well, I think if you bowl, I'm going to pick this table up and move it from pair to pair. That's pair, a good pair, idea. Because, you know, the chat will be flooded with how's Mike doing? Yeah. How's Mike bowling? Hey, how's Mike bowling? <laughs> you know, what? Mike's bowling? I thought he was supposed to be doing uh, broadcasting. I would, uh, I would take alcohol to my street shoes so that I'm not, you know, dragging anything on the approach to hurt the other bowlers. But I'd bowl in my street shoes because I would need to stop with the two-finger delivery. Yeah. I don't have much time I can enter this tournament with a two-handed delivery, especially if I put my thumb in the ball for spares. I mean, once the rule changes. If you're going to do it, now's, yeah, you know, now's the time. Now or never. Definitely. Hey, you know what? We have bowling. We've got bowling? Yeah. Oh, Adzies. Adzies and Queensies won the holiday doubles two years in a row. That's what we call them, Adzies and Queensies. What haven't they won? Yeah. Tom Adcock, coming at you. Jason and I have something in common. Thanks. Yeah, we're both one-hit wonders. That's true. That's true. You, you Same are tournament. Both. Yeah, that's true. You know, but honestly, am I, am I really a one-hit wonder if I've made four TV shows, though? I mean, because are, are those hits? I mean, I've got one number one. Yeah. But I've got a couple of hits. Yeah, no, that's true. You do have a couple of hits. So, so, uh, so am I really a one-hit wonder? For those, for those not looking, Mike's really thinking deep about this. I don't know, man. You know, I, me, you know what I mean? You don't have to, to, to top the charts. I think you're still a one-hit wonder. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, hell, I've been saying it for seven years. Why give it up now, right? Cubs are up one nothing. You're Sweet. a four-hit wonder, they're saying in the chat. <laughs> you know, I am what I am. L a lot of people out there that would love to have the one hit. How many regional titles do you have? Ten. I got a whole bunch of seconds. I've got two Iowa Open titles. I've got a Fusion title. I've got titles. I've got scratch tournament wins at every state touching Iowa. Tom, I want to talk about something during this game number six. Okay. And I want to get the chat involved in this. All right. Let's bring him in, man. Here we go. I love interacting with people. This is the question. Okay. Okay. What are the top advances in technology in life that have changed our lives the most? Turn it. Come on. You got you to bring us up. The camera? Yep. All right. Yep. It's this computer right here. The cell phone. It's this computer right here. You think the cell phone has changed lives? You're never away from anybody. Ever. Not there. That's my. That's mine. Right off the top of my head. All right. We'll just go back and forth. We'll go back and forth with some of these things. And chime in in the chat. I'm going to let these kind of build up, and then we'll go through some of them. So I've got one for you. Okay. The refrigerator. I see where you're going. What would life be like if there was no refrigerator at your house? Wow. Like you wanted to make a salad. There's no refrigerator at the grocery store either, by the way. There's no frozen foods. Wow. How would life, what would life look like? If there was no refrigerator. Well, I mean, if you're going to go that far back, the wheel. I mean, come on. The wheel. The wheel. I mean, what are you doing here? You know? The wheel. <laughs> the wheel. 
no, you're you're right. But I mean, seriously, think about that. When people lose power, they lose their minds. Yep. Think about just. Uh, Now, the air conditioner and the heater I don't think counts as much because you could always burn logs. I mean, the air conditioner would because a fan. Fan's a pretty important one, too. But yeah. Yep. you don't have to have wow. a fan. Now, now you're getting deep. You're getting deep. All-time. All-time. Creations. Light. The light bulb. The light bulb, yes. Because everything would just shut down as soon as it got dark. You couldn't. Yeah, you just you, everybody just goes into their homes. The light bulb. Yep, definitely. What year was the refrigerator invented? I don't know. Let's find out. Eighteen thirty-four. It's been around a while. Yep. It was much needed. Yeah. Somebody said. Somebody done well. Somebody said, "Hey, you know <laughs> what? Like, you know, everybody pays tribute to the people that invented post-it notes. <laughs> I'm gonna pay tribute to the person that invented the refrigerator. I'm gonna go bowl that. You know, I I care so much about that that I hope that eighteen thirty-four is my score tomorrow for the six games we bowl." Kevin Williams says, uh, the lunchbox, a.k.a. Curse to Casey Murphy. Glad you're here, Kevin. Uh, the light bulb, cell phone, air conditioning. Hey, Jerry, I uh, did not see that before you posted that. That's my buddy Jerry Graves. Hi, Jerry. Jet ski sit at the house if you want to take it out to the Sue, lake. Sue says if all these things haven't been invented, we'd all be healthy. <laughs> I'm biased. I live in Texas. I'd put carrier on Mount Rushmore. <laughs> The air conditioner. <laughs> <laughs> Combustible engine. Yep. Brian Bowers in the chat. Hey, Big Red. We're talking about me bowling this tournament here. Mark Henninger. Why aren't you up here, Mark? You should bowl this. <clears throat> Have you ever bowled one of these, Mark? I'm pretty sure he I think I've seen, yeah, I've seen him at these events. He's been up here before. Oh, it's a long drive up from Kansas City. Well, Keeler's up here from Kansas City. But that that's an interesting thought to think about yeah. what what inventions have happened. The refrigerator's a good one, light's a good one, the combustible in, I mean all of those are I mean what did you, how did you eat before the refrigerator? Fresh. Like in, in, in eighteen in eighteen thirty in eighteen thirty three before the refrigerator, think about where we were as a race, you know, as human beings. And if you wanted to eat a steak. Well, you probably had to go catch the cow. Like were there people that would kill the animal and then and then it would be hey we're going to kill it this day and then we'll have it ready by 3 p.m. and then everybody in the neighborhood come by and buy a piece yeah. of it and then take it home and cook it I, that's a great question i don't know how anything worked back in 1830 that's a great question when was the light bulb invented alex um, thomas edison yeah Eighteen seventy nine. So the refrigerator was before the light bulb. Yeah. So they were worried about keeping stuff cold before they were worried about seeing in the dark. You know, when the light bulb came out, if you owned a candle company, you were Artificial going out of business. Artificial refrigeration began in the mid seventeen fifties. So the actual refrigerator in the house was eighteen thirty four. Who invented it? William Cullen. Thanks, Will. William Cullen, this bud's for you, buddy. If you're listening, <laughs> if you're listening, thank you. 
He might be up in heaven with the Macho Man Randy Savage watching this right now. Yeah. That's right, Mike Flanagan. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Here we go. <laughs> Is Mitch going to join us today? <laughs> up here with William Cullen. Yeah, that's right. He inter introduced us all to the refrigerator. Me and Hulk Hogan. Just a good thing we don't have any fun. But that's a great question, Mike. That really is. Now let me tell you how I came up with this question. Bold with wife today in Little Rock. Hope you bold good, Mark. Toilet paper. That is another. I'm sure you could just use <laughs> leaves. Hopefully Neosporin was invented before uh, toilet paper. That way the leaves, you had something for that. Um, let's see. Henninger's bold a couple times, he said. Kevin Williams says needs to invent cereal that doesn't get soggy. My buddy Corey, I, 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 my video guy, I, I challenge him with coming up with ideas and stuff that could change the world. You know, I just like to talk to people about stuff like that. He came up with an idea the other day that you take, instead of at grocery stores, you get rid of a lot of the packaging. And you create a grocery store where you would just take in your container and fill up your cereal into your container and just pay for it that way. And you don't have to pay for the box. Yeah. And do that with a lot of items. Pasta. Yeah. You know, if you wanted some spaghetti sauce, you so bring in So are they going to make it all there? I think it I think it would just be like a bulk dispenser. You walk up to it, you open it like you're pouring a drink, a fountain drink. Yeah. You know what I mean? You would mm -hmm. just open it and then you just walk up with your with your clear containers and you're like, "I got this is my cereal, this is my ragu, this is my Yeah. You know, you just get rid of packaging in mm -hmm. general. I mean, they, they kind of do that with candy now. You put it yeah. in little baggies and yeah. stuff. You scoop them out, but like a whole store like that. Henninger Bowl with the wife today in Little Rock. Everyone had a smokehouse to cure their meat back then. Yes, rest in peace, Macho Man. You know what I've been doing recently, Tom, is I'm getting – I'm going to be 40 next year, and I'm getting into this point now where I'm I'm really starting to take interest in people from my childhood that were just people that I viewed as an actor or a entertainer or a musician that I enjoyed – listening to their product but I never took an interest in the in the actual human being right and now I'm going back and I'm starting to watch documentaries and read things about how certain people that I grew up listening to or, or enjoyed uh, what they did from an artist standpoint and learning more about their lives Jack Ritter or John Ritter sorry John Ritter yeah, Jack Jack, Jack Tripper from uh, Three's Company I just watched a documentary on him and his life and how he died early. And what happened to him. And I watched this, uh, I watched this video uh, Dave Grohl oh. about Foo Fighters. Uh huh. And he goes all the way back to Nirvana through this thing. Wow. It was on Netflix. I, I couldn't recommend it more. It was a phenomenal put together piece. It's on Netflix? Piece. Yeah. Oh, I have to tell my son about that. Dave so if you're Grohl. still listening. It's. Uh, my it's son's a music nut. He loves music. It's called Foo Fighters Back and Forth. Back and Forth. Yeah, it's phenomenal. I have to watch that. Yep. You've been watching the new David Letterman show on I have Netflix? It. Yeah, mm. he's doing these sit-down long interviews. I'm not a big Netflix guy. My uh, my sport my excuse me my TV watching is sports. And then, uh, you know, 
we've got some shows that we watch. Uh, Yellowstone. Did you watch that Yellowstone on the Paramount? Thing? You know, you know what's so crazy about that Yellowstone, man, is it's shot in Utah. And Kevin Costner, right? Uh huh. And I, I subscribe to this Actors Guild. I'm on this list. Okay. And I get emails all the time about, hey, we need people between these ages to be on the show. Because I went and I actually was um, extra for a day on the set of Blood and Oil when that was on ABC. Okay. I just want to see what all that's about, how all uh -huh. that works. And, uh, yeah, I could go be part. I could go be on an episode of Yellowstone if oh, I really wanted so to. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I'd be like an extra. Like yeah. on Blood and Oil, I was on for like one second walking by in the background as a, as a doctor. <laughs> you didn't even see my face. It was just the back of my head. <laughs> I haven't recorded. So that's your good side. I have it recorded on the DVR, and every once in a while, Kim and I will be sitting there, and I'll be going through the DVR, and I'm like, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch my moment, <laughs> my Hollywood moment." Um, the other one we like is, uh, oh my goodness, Red, um, Blacklist. Okay. And I, we're Big Brother fans, of course. Yeah, we so. watch Big Brother, too. We watch America's Got Some. We watch a lot of the reality shows. Hey, I'm a big Bachelor in Paradise Oh, fan. my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. So so I've given my my wife and my daughter watching Bachelorette or Bachelorette. Oh, yeah. Whichever the heck it one was. And I'm like, oh, come on. You know, they're all crying at the end. And I'm like, what the? You know, this show is so stupid. And then. We're sitting there, you know, then the Bachelor in Paradise comes in afterwards, and then Sue and I are sitting on the couch, and we're talking, and I start e explaining something. I, I forget exactly what I said, but it had to do with Bachelor in Paradise, and I looked right at her, and I thought, and I said to her, I said, what in the hell am I talking about? <laughs> what in the hell am I talking about Bachelor in Paradise? And then, of course, we watch it all. Now oh, yeah. We, we DVR it. We love Bachelor in Paradise. I just think that show is so stupid. It's, it's, we, we watch it, but it's stupid. It, yeah, like, you it, know, like they, they got these big problems <laughs> while they're in on this beach. Yeah, you know, they got these real big problems. Yeah, yeah, because the one guy was out there kissing everybody oh, and yeah. was in with one girl, and she didn't tell him. And then one of the other guys told him she was kissing him, and she got mad because she was kissing him. But yet, you know, she was out <laughs> kissing a couple other guys. You know, there's the they should call it another name, by the way. But yeah, you no. Know. But hey, two people got engaged, and uh, you know they they followed. We haven't watched it yet. Hey, they followed their heart. We haven't watched it yet. Well, you got dude. It was like three weeks old. Yeah, no. Well, it's maybe it was last old. week. <laughs> it was last week. We haven't watched it yet. You got to watch the uh, after the final rose or whatever they call that. Okay, the uh, Astrid. What's his name? I couldn't believe that he wouldn't. Oh, <laughs> that Kevin? Was it Kevin? What the hell was his name? Which one? Which guy? Astrid was the girl. That they just broke up the next to last show. They were like rock solid the whole time. Oh yeah, Kevin, the guy from Canada. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, you, you you need to watch the, uh, the 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 on the couch show. Okay. With the live studio audience. Okay. Yeah, yeah, watch that. Is that one still? On? Is that one? It was on. So that's the last one. We've probably got it DVR. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The the two shows for people that are watching that. Uh, that I highly recommend watching on Netflix is uh, Ozark. I really like Ozark. What's that about? The craziest uh, things in the world. I'll, I'll, I'll set you up with the kind of how it starts. Um, Jason Bateman's in it. He's the main character. Okay. He and his, he and his buddy are like these lawyer guys that are they're like moving – they're moving like mafia money or drug cartel money through what they're doing with their work and they're making good money. They don't tell their wives what's going on or anything. And then the drug cartel comes in and there's, they end up killing his friend and then they tell him, we're gonna kill your whole family unless you go to the Ozarks and start laundering money for us. And it just takes on this like so crazy. In the, in the Ozarks in Missouri? Yeah. Oh, cool. But the problem is it's not shot in the Ozarks. It's shot in Atlanta, Georgia. Nice. But they have some drone shots and stuff at the Ozarks. But yeah. it's, it's crazy. I mean, it shows insane what huh. happens. You wouldn't believe what happens in this show. 
So is it like a like a cliffhanger hanger like on the edge of your seat? Type you you just or? can't believe what they what this guy has to do from show to show. I mean, people are dying all the time, and his kids are know about all this stuff, and like they they have hundreds of thousands of dollars in the drywall of their house. Like just <laughs> I mean, crazy. Then the other show I watch is Stranger Things, which is set in the '80s, and that's okay. another phenomenal show. Okay. We have standings after five. Oh, back to bowling. Brandon Biondo, plus 161. Dan Limish is a plus 136 in second. Third is Dave Axon at plus 129. Good for Dave. Fourth is Ryan Zager at plus 91. Casey Murphy's up to fifth at plus 73. Steve Taylor is sixth at plus 63. Seventh is Billy Hibbert at plus 62. Kaiho Kun is plus 37 and eighth. Mark Stinger is ninth at plus 27. And at plus 25 and 10th is Tony Miller. Currently right now there are 15 people plus on this wow, squad. Wow, scores dropped a little bit then. And uh, Tanya Rumpenper, who I thought was going to do really well, is minus 15 now in 20th position. Tom Adcock also, he's minus 19. A.J. Chapman minus 26. Brent Boho minus 35. So they are not easy. Jacob what? Borsch minus 51. What's Casey Murphy at again? Plus 73. Yeah, not anymore. We've got the front eight. Yeah, on our feature pair. Hey, uh, don't let him, uh, don't let him catch me. Hurry up, get him up. Come on, get him on there. He's, oh, on, he's, he's already on. Yeah, we've had him on the whole oh, time. Okay. Oh, maybe we should start talking about him. <laughs> we might have to voice that one over, <laughs> like we did on the seven ten. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. <laughs> Yeah, it would go something like this. I would just I would just piece all this in. Yeah, Tom Casey Murphy's won the tournament twice. You know, 13 and 14 is one of his favorite pairs. Let's see how he gets going here. You know, not the 13 and 14 is an awesome pair. You've sat here and watched me make some runs on that pair to end. I love ending the tournament right through here. These pairs are really good. 11 oh. and 12 and 13 and 14 are Well, he's got the really first strike pairs. there, so he's got the first one. Maybe he'll bowl 300 this game, Tom. Front 10. Yeah, probably going to catch me. No, front one. We're in the first frame still, dummy. Oh, oh I thought we were voicing well, over the 10th frame. No, here we go. All right. Now, here's <laughs> Casey Murphy up in the second frame looking for the first two. Well, he's got it on his way to 300. We'll keep an eye on this as it moves along throughout the day. You know, this this reminds <laughs> me of the MLB app. I get a, I get a, uh, get a notification every time somebody gets six – innings in with a no hitter <laughs> and then about 30 minutes later and sometimes not even that long oh no hit bit over you know well why don't you wait till they get through eight all right here i'm gonna do the, me. i'm gonna do the third frame okay you got it just cut me out you can edit me out can't you if i just keep blabbering like i am right now murphy with another strike that's Sh the third frame call shocker you're gonna edit me out of this I want, I want to, I want the finished product. How about give me one of these? Hey, now Murphy's up here in the fourth, Mike. Murphy in the fourth. Bada boom, done. Yeah. Front four. Yeah, he's got them all. Here okay. we go. Third of the way. All right, so we're not going to do another one because he's actually up in the ninth. So he has to bowl 300 for those voiceovers to even be worth anything for me to put together a compilation of him bowling 300. All eyes are on Casey Murphy on lane 13. The whole bowling center stops. Is the shot any good? Oh. See, that's all we had to do. Stuff nine Brooklyn. Yep. Brooklyn it stuff nine. Have. So all that uh, all that voiceover was for nothing. Yeah, I'm gonna send him a bill. He'll probably pay it. I'd rather you bill me, because I'd rather owe you than cheat you out of it. Yeah, that's true. What do we got going? Any any new uh, inventions? Tuned in for a bowling program. People talking about cereal and Netflix. Well, um, sorry. <laughs> you went to the wrong place if you're looking for bowling. That was your ball driller that said that. That was my ball driller. Greg Getzlow in here. How you doing, Greg? Yep, definitely black clouded Casey. It's only 520. You should still be working. Get to drilling some bowling balls. He only drilled like five for me this week.
you consider Steve Taylor an underrated player? Yeah. He's got two or three regional titles. Good player, always right around there. Nothing really, you know, nothing real flashy. Just goes out there and gets it done. For those of you that wonder why I'm laughing, guy just stuck two fingers down his throat like he was uh, going to shoot himself after going 4-4. Four, four. The hard eight. Matt Thompson just joined. Hey, Matthew, how come you're not over here? That's our big star. About a million views on YouTube when the pin fell down. Did you ever see that, Tom? Yeah. Pen pals down, come yep. back up. Yep. There's a couple of those out there. Oscar's got a pretty awesome one where the six pin goes to the wall, hits the ten pin, knocks ten down, the six stands up. Got Bill O'Neill's in in the what is it? The, what was that at the Worlds? Yeah. World Championships. Where the head pin goes off the wall, flips over and stands up. Matt had one happen. How many views does the sweep get? The one where the guy's going for 300 and the sweep comes yeah, down and gets it. That was in your event. Yeah. Three million. Three million views. Yeah. You get a dollar for every one of those views, right? You get two dollars for every thousand. That's pretty good. Is the rule of thumb. Is that unique viewer, viewers, or if I watch no. it, if I watch it a million times? So you'll give me two dollars for every thousand videos I watch. Uh, no. There's my job. The I'll just sit there and click on your videos no, all day long. the person that owns the content gets the money. Well, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I guess you could. I'll just sit there and click on Mike, Mike Flanagan videos all day long. Do I have to watch the whole thing or do I just got to click on it? Got to watch the ad. Oh, I skipped the ads. Oh, went right back to the Brooklyn side and carried that time. Well, that was second ball, 268. So Casey just went to 140 over with uh, oh one to go. Can I see the standings real quick? I want to see how yeah. these St. Ambrose kids are doing. They're just over here to our right. Billy's in seventh at plus 62. Front five, nine out. Nine spare in the seventh. Michael Martell is in 12th at 19 over. He's got strike spur turkey. Brent Bohos, 35 under. He's got spare turkey, spare, spare. Alex Denton, where's Alex at? Got some open play bowlers asking me what's going on in here today. Oh, birthday party. Yep, some kids want to pull this tournament. Alex is minus 58. He's got to find some. He's got to find some games. Travis, where's Travis Anderson? Good shot, Brent. Cock just had 228. Where's he at? Tommy just went to.
Hunt a plus nine with one to go. That's really struggling here. How are you, Dan? Finishing up game number six here on lane seven, eight, nine, and ten. Glad you're here watching us. Watching some bowling, listening to me and Tom up here in the booth. We'll be back with the C Squad still tonight. Tomorrow morning we'll have the cashers round, the top third of the field, and then we'll be back uh, around noontime or so is when the uh, modified stepladder begins. We'll have action for you all the way up to about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, usually when it gets over here at the Fusion. Glad you're watching here on Facebook and archived coverage on YouTube. If you want to see the updated standings, you can see them over on our Twitter feed, at Inside Bowling on Twitter. And we also post the scores at the end of the block, each block here on Facebook. Tom led the morning squad. What were we over, 246 or something? 24. 224. 224. Second was like 176, I believe. 174, I led by exactly 50. 50 exactly. So. Right now, Dan Limish is 144 over. Or actually, no, that's not right. You got the right one. Yeah. Brandon Biondo actually 161. is 161. 136 over is Dan Limish. Dave Axon plus 129 on the squad. Dave Bear is re-entered and is plus 20. That shot he just made there, that lefty. Oh, Mark Stinger. Yeah, Mark. That would be the that would be the exact same line I'd be playing with the house ball. Okay. <laughs> would your ball be would it be hooking that way as well? I don't know. I know. I think I think I'd get two boards of hook from the right to the left. Okay, well, his is hooking from the left to the right. Yeah. I could throw two-fingered back up if you think there's a better look over there. Pretty impressive what a couple of guys have done there. Yeah. Anthony Simonson doing that to win a title. I can do it, too. There's lots of people who can do it. Hell, I can do it. Doesn't mean I'm going to do it good. That's the problem with if I were to play that line like Mark just did. Five pin for Steve Taylor. Big shot for Billy over here on 11. Broke up the split. He's at 50-some over. He's going to shoot 220 this game if he makes a spare. 
Michael Martell's at 19 over. He's got 250 left if he punches here on the 10th. There's another re-entry. Michael was balling this morning. <laughs> Rob Amer's walking by. Is he still bowling? <laughs> yeah. He pulled the Jeff Riggles and won the tournament last night at the casino. So. Minus 123, Rob is. Wow. Steve Taylor just pulled a really good game for 196. Yes, he did. Did you see the big gasp over air? Yeah. It tells you how hard they are out there. They're, you know. No matter what you put out, somebody's always going to match up, but they are not easy. Well, that's going to do it for that game. Stone 9, 240. Billy with a strike for 224. Bring it back oh, in here. Back in, me and you. Back into the guys with face yeah. for radio. Yeah, we're up here. We're up yeah. here. We're really doing it. We're really, really doing it right here. Continuing to bring you the coverage here. We've got some uh, college football going on back there. No, we do. Yeah. Michigan trouncing SMU 35 to 13. Big game for the Hawkeyes tonight against UNI. Probably be doing that. Seven o'clock kickoff, I believe. Find a place to go watch that. Who am I kidding? <laughs> I'll be sitting here with you. Yeah, you will. <laughs> well, well, you'll be sitting up here while I'm down there throwing my screened white dot. Actually, I need two, two white dots. I need one. We can have one to make spares. One with screen and okay. one at about 2,000. Okay. Knock a little bit of polish off. Should I go into Rich and get them ordered? What color do you want? You pick. Get your specs. Something feminine. You get your specs. Carry. Brent Boho out there. 4,500. That shot just got him back to even with one to go. Nobody, uh, nobody's bowling yet in our lanes. If it was a four-game block, I'd bowl. It's the seven games that's the problem. Yeah. Because I can I can shoot 800 for four. I can't shoot 1,400 for seven. Amish bowling, I bet you could. The line that Brent Boho's playing, I could play with a resin ball. Tom's telling Eric Littig to calm down. <laughs> All right, looks like uh, we're going to have some bowling here. <laughs> he, he, he must have known I was going to give him a hard time because he pulls out of it. I tell him to calm down, and he pulls a piece of paper out of his pocket, out of his yep. shirt pocket. Any guess what it said on it? Or did you that? see it? No. It says, hi, Tom. Up yours. Really? <laughs> written down. In his pocket. Written down in his pocket. And he pulled Show it out. Show Mike. Show Mike. <laughs> he had that written down before I gave him anything. Good game, That's kiddo. Hilarious. Good game, bud. Nice game, kiddo. Come on. One more. 257 for Brent to get to uh, plus 12, I believe. Last game. Here we go, game seven. Switch your graphics, come on, get on top of it. I got it, I got it, I got the seven up. Seven of seven. Seven of seven. Paro Dudek. Oh, we got Paro and uh, 
Joe Nolan again. Let's see what we got here in the chat. We've got uh, Kyle Taylor says hello to you. my weight, I'm in. This game. If I bowl, if I bowl Steve's weight, I'm way in. So I spared in the first one. I spared the first shot, and I go, Travis, I can still strike out for my weight. So the bad news is I can't miss again. Okay, should we treat this like a real broadcast here and talk ball in this last game? Yeah, we can. I was just talking to Joe Nolan here because I see he's like 250 under. And he's a buddy of mine, and I just watched him throw the first shot, and he threw a savage, and he's on EBI staff, so I was just asking him what bowling balls he had with him. And his first shot, I mean, ran over the rack for a four pin, you know, just a little too much off the end. Maybe, like, you know, he could get his angles a little steeper maybe. and But then he, then he hooks right past the four pin, so. <laughs> So I just asked him what all he's been using. I just kind of want to watch him bowl here because I happen to kind of know his game a little bit. And it's interesting to me. A couple of EBI staffers. You guys won't be able to see Brian Roth. He's on 11 and 12. He's an EBI staffer. We got a little bit of everybody here. We got Zager from Motive. We got a couple of Brunswick guys here. Heilman. Definitely got some Storm guys here, like Casey Murphy and uh, Chad Nelson. Don't know if Tony and Dave are officially on staff, but they throw nothing but Storm. They're on 11 and 12. A lot of staffers here. Yeah. In EBI, you got Tanya, yourself. G good or bad for the game, all the staffers? Hmm. Mm-mm-mm. That's a that's a that's a tough that's a tough one. That's a tough one to answer. It is, isn't it? Interesting. It, it really is tough. It's certainly a watered down system, and that's unfortunate. Yeah. I, mean, you know. I, 
I, I get it. I, I understand what the ball companies are doing. They want they want their hands, they want their balls in the hands of good players. But that's not all it takes to be on staff. If you have a successful shop, where you can influence people, influence sales, you don't necessarily need to be a good bowler. Yeah, that's a it's a that's a tough deal, man. That's a tough deal. That's that's hard. That's hard. You need representation at events is what you need. So when they take the photo at the end, you want your you want your brand in that photo. Yes. So how do you go about doing that? Well, I'm gonna go out there and strike a lot. That's how I'm gonna go about getting my brand in that picture at the yeah. end. Yeah. I'll watch Joe Nolan on this shot here. He missed the head pin to the right the last time. Ball uh, changed. Yeah. I'm going to guess that was a GB3 maybe. Yeah. It was. What would your recommendation for him to be based off of that shot he just threw right there? Is that just too slow in the right part of the lane? Um, It looks slow to me, but. Yeah, it was probably a little slow. To me, it looked like it changed. I mean, I'm just guessing. I don't know. But from the way that rolled, it looked like it was a pin up, like it kind of changed direction really quick. I was throwing pin down balls. Oh, I can't see a pin. It must be under. Couldn't see a pin when he came back with it in his hand, unless it's in one of the rings. But, uh, you know, almost looks a little bit too shiny. Would you have him get deeper? I didn't. I'm going to be honest with you, Mike. I really wasn't paying attention to where he let that go. guy lined up. All right, I got the standings after game number six. Just dropped off, hot off the press. Okay, more important than that, the Cubs did beat the Reds one to nothing. Did they? Yes. Brandon Biondo leads at plus 156. Second is Casey Murphy at 141. Third is Dan Limish at plus 132. Dave Axon is fourth at plus 104. Billy Hibbard is in fifth at plus 86. Zager is sixth at plus 71. He's on our, on our pairs right now. Uh, in seventh is Michael Martell at plus 65. Eighth, Steven Taylor at plus 59. Nick Howman is ninth at plus 48. Dave Barris is 10th at plus 33. 16 players are plus. And that includes Tom Adcock at plus 9. Tony Miller at plus 2. Brent Boho is up to plus 22. Tony Mann is at 30. So there's some, uh, there's some scores for you. Yeah, Brent must have been 35. He just had 57. With 56 bowlers, that's uh, 18, right? Yeah, the cut, 18. Minus 13 on this squad. So it was minus 33 on the last squad, minus 13 on this squad. So we're looking at a projected cut number. But a whole bunch right in here that are ahead of that 33. So yeah. I'm, uh, probably 20, 20 under, you think? Maybe, it just depends on what we get later today. But yeah, between 20 and 30 under is the number. So Joel Nolan here, I told I I'm coaching him here. I told him move a little bit left. He's throwing an onyx vibe. Is, onyx is the vibe. Ball. Okay. I told him to move left, get it going more. A little bit more left to right. He cut it short. Cut it short. See, I I, I just think that that's too quick of a response ball. So what would you what would you put him in? To pick an EBI ball. I, well, GB3. You know, something that's a little more smooth. That. Okay. I, 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 so your Onyx Vibe is more responsive than GB3? 
Want me to be honest? Yeah. I drilled it, threw it about four times. Really, the Onyx 5? Yeah, it's not even in my bag. Didn't like it. Something smoother. What's your, how? Mike's going a different way about getting this extra entry for C squad. He's trying to get another guy lined up that's not bowling early right now, so he'll enter so that Mike doesn't have to. Right, but, exactly. but get that extra entry. Yeah. I just wanna I just wanna see Joe. I just wanna see Joe. Would you, would you like this one? Do you like this Rebel Yell move here? Um if it had a little bit well, I don't know, it does look like it's got a little bit of surface. I, I, I it's lane shine. You, you know, the Rebel Yell um wasn't a really big fan of it. See, once again though, that's a Pin, that's a pin-up ball. I just He's think got a that, lot of pin-up. I think the pin-ups are too too quick. On a, on a pattern like this, you really don't want quick change of direction. So I'll, it's just like what he said to you. If you know, if I miss right, it goes 60 feet. Yeah, yeah because it doesn't ever see. You know, just doesn't see it in the right spot. All right. Well, let's see what the rebel yell does here for him. He's also been kind of cutting it short a little bit. He's not getting through it really good. That one was better. That one was yeah. better. I mean, that, that's a good shot. That's where you got to hit him in this place. You hit him in, the, in this building, that hit yeah. normally carries. That one didn't. Okay. Um, like that ball with maybe just a little bit more surface. You know, he's he is in game seven, and I was into a GB3 Pearl by game seven. Okay. You know, it was actually game six. Probably should have went to it game five. I was looking for round today. That's, you know, I was looking for that round shape. I wasn't looking for the quick change of direction. Anything interesting going on in there? Rick Benoit. Margins are too small. He says it's bad for, uh, bad for bowling. Yeah, we're getting caught up here in the uh, chat. Mike Peters. Mike Peters joined or Mike say something? He just joined. Oh, somebody else said something. Scroll back up just a little bit. Joe Dixon, hi, Tom. Again, uh, it was a rip solid GB3 and GB3 Pearl. Hi, Rick. How are you, sir? Glad to have you back in the States. I'll check on those Twitter standings that you're requesting. See what Joe does here on this shot. See, that's a little better. And yeah, now he's getting nine every yeah. time. It's good ball reaction. I mean, he's better in the pocket. I, I think he needs just a little more surface. Yeah. You know, it's funny we're sitting here talking about ball reaction. I would consider that one of my worst aspects of my game is is knowing the ball motion and you know and seeing seeing ball motion. I guess I just kind of I kind of feel it. I kind of do what I do. I can't really explain why I do what I do. But uh, I really think if I could see the lane a little better, I could have a lot more success. So what would you tell Joe to do now? He's gone uh, seven pin, ten pin. Did you have a move at all? I, I, off of those two shots, I probably wouldn't. I'd just probably stay just right try there. to throw up there. Yeah. You know, I mean, what is the move off a swish seven and a flat ten? That wasn't a, that wasn't a wrap ten. You know what I mean? He didn't yeah. send the six around. Right, it. right. 
you know, maybe just slow it down a little bit, try to get it to get up into the pocket just a little bit more. You know, I don't, do you move so just off, small you know, tweaks. Yeah, do you move off of that? Do you throw it just a little bit? So do you try to just catch it just a little more? I think those two shots, the, the last two shots that he throws, if he's got just a little bit more surface on that ball, I'm not talking staying on it with 500. You know, maybe lightly hit it with a 2,000 pad so it reads the lane just a little bit quicker. You know, round that shape up just a little bit more. I, I think those carry. I could be wrong. That's what I was trying to do today. Or pin down also. Yes. Yes, just a little more round. See if Rick is still in there. Rick is super awesome. See if he's making any comments on that. That man is a, a very good coach on, on ball motion. And, you know, what he preaches is bowling is about transition. And that's basically what we're talking about. Yeah, I just saw my buddy 250 under and watched him throw a decent shot and whiff it and then goes to another ball and it's going sideways and just, you know. You know, Temple suggests a spoiler. You know, might, might be a better ball. I don't know that rebel, to me that rebel yell is good and I and I was fighting I was thinking about going to one I've got one you know I've got a rebel yell that matches has the same drill on all the other three balls I threw today that uh, <clears throat> for me now I haven't thrown the rebel yell compared to the GB3 pearl but I would say that even though that for me the rebel yell is round but it wouldn't be quite as round as the gb3 and the gb3 for me the gb3 pearl is really smooth it's still smooth but it got through the fronts a little bit better when the original gb3 started to read it just a little too soon it got through it before it made the shape and i, I was actually thinking about going to the to the rebel yell that's got about a thousand grit surface but it's got a bunch of games on it see now that's a pretty good shot. see and then the, but that one peeled yeah, they're. Just, I mean, they're. Was it? Was he? Was he? Did it look slower? I, to you? I think he got it a little further right, so he got it into the friction a little quicker. But yeah. might have been, might have been a little slow. They're, they're just. They're not easy. No. Well, after going weak, weak, it's very easy for you to make a hand position change Absolutely. or slow it up so Absolutely. you get it to finish. And just it, what just I said, you know, and then all of a sudden it busts off and goes through it. Of course, yeah. of course can't leave him, can't leave him the 4.7. It's got to be the 4.7.10. Right, right, right. You know. Right. Is that right? Something a little round. You know, out, out of box. I yeah. So with that rebel yell, out of box, I really, I, it was... It was very oil sensitive for me. When, when it hit the friction, it went dead left. When it didn't get to the friction, it went 60 feet. Um, so I watched Dom at the Masters. Looked like he had 500 on one of those and yeah. just had the, the berries. Yeah, he did. As he we were trying to tell sell T-shirts earlier. Um, so I said, huh. I went home. He had the berries. I went home. And hit mine with a fresh thousand pad, just by hand, not on a spin or anything. And and proceeded to shoot 820, I think, the first night of league with it. And was also the ball that I threw at singles and nationals. That almost got me an eagle. There we go. See? There we go. There we go. Yep, now you gotta figure out how to get four of those in a row and stay clean the rest of the frames.
Did Rick ever make it? No. Or it says Aura. Temple says Aura. Eruption Pro. Had Rick made a comment in between there? I don't think so. He must have just popped in and maybe popped back off. Yeah. Do you ever, yeah, have you dealt with Rick much? We haven't talked a lot. I mean, I respect the man for what he does. Um, I'd like to help him with his social media a little bit. Um, he posts, like, thoughts on his mind, like, five or six times within an hour, and then goes away, and it comes back, and, and it's not good for your social game. Like, if he's got a bunch of things he wants to talk about, he should space them out a couple a day, help him get better reach, won't overwhelm his followers. Yeah. So there's just some stuff from a social standpoint that I see him making some mistakes. Um, I'd like to see him channel his energy and the way that he does what he does in such a way that people are like, God, i got to follow this guy. The, um, the man knows a lot about bowling. Yep. Passionate, uh, too. His, uh, his teachings are very good. I've stayed. Brad Angelo is one of his biggest uh, yep. <clears throat> support. I guess, well, I don't know, I'd say supporter. Obviously, he's a supporter of Rick, but he's more of a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Mentor. Well, he wouldn't be Rick's mentor. No, he's, no, no. Um, but yeah, Rick is his mentor. Spokesperson. You know, he, you know and uh, in talking with Brad, you know, Brad, Brad's flat out told me he's not, he still is not as successful as he is today because he's out there out bowling everybody. It's because of the theories and the teachings of yeah. Rick and how they see the lane has kept um, Brad on top of his game um, for ball motion. Absolutely. I agree. I talk to Brad about Rick all the time. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, the other thing, Mike, is this is a game. This is a pair I shot 190. <laughs> I had the right lane hooking a lot more when I bowled on this one, of course. Threw a couple of not really good shots on it. Okay, so so Joe, I'm gonna set I'm gonna set a line on this for his final score of this game. Okay. All right, so Joe can bowl 165, right? 165. Yep. So I'm going to set the over under at 154 and a half. Over. What are we betting? Bag of Cheetos? <laughs> Aquafina. Aquafina. Dasani. Oh, that's good. Beautiful. That's beautiful. So, Swisher 7, flat 10, through the face, strike, 4 pin, strike. I think he's got the left lane hook more for him and where he's at. Where he's at, yeah. So like if he you had know, another you know, shot on you know, nine, but I, I don't care. He, yeah, I mean, he tells you that he thought he threw that shot as good. You can't tell. Me. You're a bowler. Yeah, you can't. You tell. just went. You just went. Blower seven, flat ten. You can't tell me that in your mind you didn't think I've got to get it up. You didn't do something different to try to get that right. into the pocket a little better. And look, See, he, he, he threw didn't that bad. He didn't like he that. He threw that one bad. And, and he had the he had there. His, yeah, he had the yeah. shot. Yeah. And and um. <laughs> no. And I've got my Cheetos. You do have Cheetos. That's right. He's going to shoot 160 here. It's easy. It's so easy to see it from back here compared to down there. You know, and, and, and speaking of what we're talking about, it's amazing the breaks you get, the room you get when you get the right piece in your hand. That one he got right. And it almost switched. And, I mean, and, and it almost switched. And it almost struck. He yeah. got that one right, and he almost strikes. Yeah, but it got to the pocket, got nine, 
you know, he's in a spot now where that will, you know, probably be serviceable. Dave Burris is going to take advantage of his re-enter. He was, what was Dave after six, 30 uh, I over? I thought he was 30-something, yeah. And he's going to, just going to shoot two teens, so he's going to be about 50 Plus over. 51, yeah. Facebook Dave. lets us stream for four hours, and we're at three hours and 42 minutes. So. Sweet. So it looks like we're going to. So am I getting fired in 18 minutes? Is that what you're telling me? I'm signing off. I'm going to get something to eat, man. <clears throat> I'm going to get something to eat here at the Kingpin Bar and Grill. Nikki. <clears throat> well, we still got 13 and 14 going. That yeah, featured pair still going. Yep. Jim. Take you down there. John Shallow can strike out here for 226. What's John at? Frequent finalist in this event. Minus 60. Minus 60. 226 is it's still minus 30. That's probably not enough. But you never know. Depends on how bad they bowl tonight. Yep. Yep. I want to thank everybody for joining us as we finish up the squad. I want to thank Tom for sitting in with me the entire block. You're very welcome. Uh, thank you for everybody that got in the chat and asked questions. Um, sorry if we missed anything. There's a lot going on here, and we tried to sort of roll back through there and do the best we could. Yeah, I'm not even sure if we see all the chat either on yeah. Facebook. I think some of it doesn't show up. But uh, definitely do appreciate everybody coming in and watching today. We are on uh, Facebook. We'll be back about... Oh, probably 7 o'clock now, 7.15 or so with uh, the C-Squad. Of course, tomorrow we'll be uh, having the cashers around in the morning, and then we'll have the uh, stepladder. It's really unique here. They take uh, the top 10. Yeah, so it's uh, 9 versus 12. No, they take top 10, 7 bowls 10, 8 oh, bowls that's 9. What it was. 7 versus 10, that's right. 8 bowls 9. The winners move on to bowl. The winner of the 7 10 match bowls the fifth seed. The winner of the 8-9 match bowls the sixth seed. The two winners of the, those matches bowl each other to get the fifth seed for and the normal step. The ladder. top four are all just chilling. Top four are chilling, relaxing, football. getting stiff, I hope, tomorrow, and waiting to bowl. Hopefully i got to bowl one match tomorrow. That'd be all right. That would be all right. That's what I had to do when I won. I had to bowl one match. Well, that's going to do it for the coverage here, 2018. Fusion Realtors Community First National Bank Open, the September event. I'm Mike Flanagan. was joined by Tom Hess the entire time. I appreciate it, Tom. Thank you, Mike, for having me. I'm glad I could help you out. We'll be back with C-Squad here in about, oh, an hour or so. And we'll see you right back here on Facebook and archived on YouTube. Talk to you later. Thank you, folks. Have a great day.